Uh, hello everyone in this video i want us to continue working on our next 13 uh, e-commerce application and so far so good because we are able to add items to cart remove from cart increase decrease quantity select colors and so on we are also able to uh, authenticate users and also we are able to process payments using stripe and now in this video i want us to uh, complete the rest part of the application and that will be mainly the admin dashboard so we will create an admin dashboard like this one we will have a summary section uh, to show some uh, summary data then at the bottom here we also have a graph for the last seven days uh, sales and then we will be able to add products or create products and we'll be saving the details in our mongodb but for images we'll be uploading the images in firebase storage so right here maybe we can try to create a demo product so demo product and then the price let it be 45 brand let it be uh, maybe apple description apple right here then i can say desk for description we say that the product is in stock then uh, what are we selling you can say it's a laptop then amazingly here we can select the different colors that we want in this case i'll upload a black one i can click on this one just a demo image now this is the banner that i used at the home page and right here we can add the product creating the product it might take a while so we wait uh, it's creating still loading okay product created and now if we go back to our home we should see a product like that and this is it here you can see demo product then all this right here really cool we can increase decrease quantity we can add to cut view cut and there it is also we can remove it so we will see how we can create the product using this form and then we will be able to manage the products using a rich data table like this one so we can select stuff uh, i think we can also filter we can do a complex filter here and sort and so on and right here we can be able to mark whether a product is in stock or out of stock we can be able to view that particular product so uh, i can't see the product that we added okay it's at the bottom here demo product and we can view it and uh, you see we get that product then we can also be able to delete a product so deleting product product deleted really awesome okay we will have orders and for orders we'll be able to mark them as uh, dispatched uh, we can also be able to mark them as delivered we can view the order and here it is awesome we will also work on our own orders so we have your orders here we will create this table right there another cool thing is that uh, after we create products uh, we will now also create this bar right here for the different categories so that we can filter our products uh, depending on the categories okay and then we'll also work on this search right here so that we can search for anything for example let's search for phone then search and it filters only the phone um, maybe we see this right here because it has a phone somewhere maybe in its description uh, that's why it shows up because we also check even the description and you can see at the description here you have phone okay that's why the watch uh, showed up uh, another thing that we will do is to work on our product reviews right here because we haven't worked on it yet so yeah uh, basically we are going to complete the application in this particular video and then we'll also uh, deploy it to vassal for free so i'll show you how to do that okay so the first thing that we can do is to create this admin page and then we will work on these uh, navbar here and it's a nested navbar because we have the top one and also this one 
so this is the complete application but here is the uh, ongoing one so this is what we are working on so when i go to admin dashboard it doesn't exist it's 404 so let's start with that one back to the files here uh, what you need to do is to open the app and then you'll just add a new folder here called admin and by that it has already created that route but this needs to have a file and the default file here is page.tsx it can be ts it can be js status functional component here and we can say this is the admin right here we return something for now we can return a div and we will say admin page let's go ahead and add a class name and we'll give it padding to the top of eight so i save that one uh, now we should be able to see that page when we go to admin i refresh and there we go now our admin page loads and you can see here we have admin page so how do we create the nested navbar so the good thing with the next 13 we can nest our routes and we can have nested layouts so we have the default layout right here this one which have even the top navbar the main content and the footer but we can also have nested layout uh, at, at page level so that is what we will make use of so at admin here we'll add a new file and we will call it a layout uh, dot tsx so here we should also be exporting a component and we can call it admin layout then right here we will have a div to wrap everything and here is where we will show our nav so here let me just add a placeholder we will have a nav there but we should also include children and the children are uh, our pages or the rest of our content so here i include this and i'll get children from crops and we can give this a type so children again this will be of type react dot uh, react node and now here we show the children and the children will involve this page right here so here we say children so for each of the nested layouts it can have its own uh, metadata because this is like a completely new section so we can also export here const metadata so we can have title eShop admin and also you can have a description for this <laughs> let me just copy this eShop just takes time to write that one and here we'll have this as admin uh, dashboard and i save so let's see what we have now i open the app and here you see nav so nav will show for uh, all the children that we'll be having okay for other pages okay the first one is this one so it will be available for all of them another thing is that you notice that the top here now we have eShop admin and that comes from um, this metadata that we have added right here so let's work on this nav so at components we can add a new folder called admin and we can add a new file and i can call this one admin nav dot tsx here status functional component and we'll have as admin nav let's render a div let's have width as full shadow small top hyphen of 20 will do and then border uh, 1 px so let's include this as border at the bottom finally I can add a padding to the top of four and then right here we will make use of our container component which we created in previous videos so container uh, it's auto imported there and we have it like that in here we will have another div so div and in this div is where we will list our different links so we will have these links right here summary add product manage product and 
the rest. So rest style, the way those links will show. So here, we will display frex. The links will show in a row. So frex row. Then let's have items to the center. Then let's have justify uh, between. For MD, let's have justify to the center. So medium screen and above. Then let's have a gap of eight. Then MD, let's have a gap of 12. And overflow here x of outer so go to x outer frex we have no wrap just like that now for our items uh, since we have a lot going on like the icon the text uh, we can create a component for it and then we can reuse it so let's create a new file inside admin here and we can call it an admin nav item tsx status functional component will have admin nav item we will be returning a div and we'll have an interface because we'll be accepting some props so let's create that interface we can say interface admin nav item props we will have a property of is this item uh, selected so let me show you so if it's selected we'll have this underline it will be more dark you see so you know that we are at that particular uh, route then here we will have an icon of type icon type and this will come from react icons so icon type make sure to import it like that we'll have a label this is now like the text, so this will be a string. Let's make sure that our component know about this. Uh, so we destructure the various props. We'll have selected, we'll have icon, and we'll have the label. So this icon should be a component, so we can rename it to icon. They should be inside curly brackets. Uh, just like that right here we will have a class name use this and then backticks because we will concatenate strings or join them and let's start with flex here and then items to the center then we'll have justify center text to the center then we'll have a gap of one a padding of two border um, bottom of two and we'll have a hover text hyphen straight uh, hyphen 800 and then we will transition casa will be pointer and we'll say if it's selected we will show some styles here else we will show others there we'll have a border bottom and this will be straight uh, hyphen 800 will do and then right here uh, we'll have border is transparent so it's not visible also here the text will be straight hyphen 800 and for this one it will be 500 so text straight 500 so it will be a bit pale okay so those are the class names let's get inside this div here we will be having our icon we can have the size prop and we can set this one to 20. the second thing we should show the label so here we will be having the label and for this div we'll also have a class name we will change the font here to medium text will be small text will be at the center and we'll say break hyphen normal and uh, basically uh, that will be it not unless we made uh, a mistake somewhere i hope not so let's come back now to our navbar and inside this container is where we will make use of our admin nav item so remember these are links so let's add a link here 
and this uh, can come from next link in here is where we will have our admin nav item component so it will be available there for this link it expects us to have a href we can push this user to stroke admin this expects us to have a label and for this one we will say summary so at stroke admin that is like the home we will have the summary there we need to have an icon and this will be md dashboard hopefully it is suggested here it will come from react icons and then right here rest set selected we can perform a check on the path so here we need to get access to the path and we can make use of a hook called uh, use path name so here before our return statement you can have const path name will be equal to use path name and this comes from next navigation so make sure it's imported from next navigation and make sure to also invoke this one so this will give us the current path that we are at and we can perform a check here to know whether we are currently there or not so here we'll say if our path name is equal to the route that we added so equal equal to admin so i save and right now we should be having uh, a nav with at least one item let's check and see if we made progress okay we should hook this at our layout so instead of this nav we should have our admin nav now i save and we should be having something now let's refresh manually so we have an issue use path name only works in current components so let's uh, make sure that we mark this particular component as a client component at the very top so sorry i had forgotten about this but the good thing is that our next js has reminded us so let's see and look amazing we have this now now here with one item saying summary and it's underlined working like magic let's add more links now so alt shift bottom arrow that will duplicate it and we can add like how many three so that is one two three let's come to this one now this will be stroke admin stroke add hyphen uh, products and then here we'll have the label as add products icon as md library add uh, selected here will be add hyphen products that's it so this will be stroke manage uh, hyphen products label will be manage products then down here uh, we'll have a stroke manage hyphen products and then here uh, the last one let's have manage orders now we didn't change the icons this one will be md uh, dns this one will be md format list this one format list bulleted <laughs> okay so we have those i save and let's see so yes we have all this um when we visit them uh, we are getting four fours because those routes or those paths uh, does not exist so how can we fix that it's pretty easy actually at our app make sure you are in admin and in admin you have layout and page so here we will add a new folder and now this will be like the nested routes we can start with add a hyphen products enter for each of these we will be having a page so page.tsx status functional component then we can say add products and let's have a placeholder here you can say div and we'll say add products i save so now when i visit 
add a product we should be able to see these component being loaded so let's come back uh click back here we click on add products and there we go so you can see here add products now this does not become active uh, we need to fix that here we should be having stroke admin and now it should be active this should be the same as this and for all of them make sure they are the same basically and there we go it's there now look we can go to summary we can go to add products now we just need to create these other two pages so uh, again up admin add a new folder there this one will be manage orders let's create another folder okay it must be at the root of the admin there so make sure you add correctly manage here product for each of them we should be having a page let's create page.tsx status functional component manage orders active that will have our manage orders let's come to this one this folder which is empty add a new file page.tsx status functional component manage products we return a div of manage products just like that i save let's test all the routes now and as you can see this is the structure of our admin dashboard there we have these different pages then we have this default page which will load uh, all the summary and you have our layout awesome so manage products uh, might take a minute to load because on dev it has to rebuild each page okay there you go so all of them are active and you can see the content here is changing and that is how we can simply create a nice uh, admin nav like that you can also consider creating a side nav for the admin uh, whichever style you want okay okay cool now the next thing that i want us to do is to cover add products okay let's start with this one for us to be able to successfully create the product we will need to have firebase storage setup because uh, we will be using that for storing images so right here uh, i would like you to visit uh, firebase.com and then uh, log in or create an account okay you can proceed with google and now right here i'll just add a new project i can say eShop vid because it's for the video and uh, here i'll continue uh, i will disable analytics and create the project this should take uh, a minute also and then we will click on continue so once we are here we will create a web project so click on web uh, give the project a name a nickname so again i'll say eShop vid i'll just register i don't need to uh, add hosting so I'll register there and here you'll see instructions uh, first of all we will have to install firebase so just copy that command and you can install firebase so i'll paste it and make sure to add it to my project uh, and then we have this information right here or configuration just copy that configuration and from the root here at our ribs uh, we can add a new file so we had this prisma dbts let's add a new file and we can call it firebase dot uh, ts and all we need to do here is to paste uh, whatever we copied down here i'll say export uh, default we can call it firebase app uh, it doesn't exist so i will replace this app with uh, that firebase app so this is complaining because uh, i think it needs to complete installing there so i'll save that file for now and then i'll go back here and we continue to console here we need to set up our firebase storage click on build then click on storage click on get started yes we can start in production mode there next 
select a location i'll just go with the default now you can see that our firebase storage here has been uh, set up we need to go to rules and we need to allow access to uh, everyone so here just uh, allow uh, read write then publish the rules okay awesome so we'll use this for storing images um, it's uh, very uh, easy to use okay so this has completed installation which is awesome and this error has disappeared awesome so now uh, let's us first set up the product schema so at our prisma schema.prisma uh, you can come here and maybe before the order or after the order uh, you can start working on the product schema here so i'll have model product will be having an id id will be a string then we'll have at id then we'll have at default we call that and we pass auto and we call it again then outside here we will have at we map our id uh, mongodb id underscore id out here we'll say at db dot object id we'll have a name for the product which will be simply a string we will have a description which will be a string we will have price which can be float a brand uh, which will be a string category uh, this will be a string in stock this will be boolean image so we can have more than one image so this will be an array of image so this image i think we had created it uh, before at the bottom here awesome let's have reviews and we'll have our review like that so down here let's create a model for the review so we'll say review the id will be similar to this one i copy this and i paste it here down here we'll have a user id for this one it will be a string and at db dot object id uh, this should start with a capital there we'll have the product id this will be a string and at db dot object id rating this will be an integer we'll have comment and this will be a string let's have created date or created at whichever you want and this one will be date time and at uh, default we'll set this one to now so as you can see this is still complaining so down here we should uh, make sure to refer to it so right here we'll have our product we'll say product uh, at uh, relation here we'll have uh, fields product id reference will be id you can see they are disappeared also we will pass a user and the type here will be user then at relation and here we'll have fields uh, user id we'll have reference as id we will add on delete will be cascade okay so we need to go to the user and also uh, refer to this review at the user here we need to say reviews can tab maybe up to this point where we have them and here we'll say review is an array of uh, type review so i'll go ahead and save that file i'll stop the running application so Control c then i'll say npx uh, prisma db push so that we update our db uh, together with the model we put them in sync so i hit enter my database indexes are now in sync awesome i go ahead and start the application using npm run dev let's create an api route that will handle uh, creating a product so at app we need to go to api we'll create a new folder we can say this is product in that folder we'll have route dot 
yes we can copy one of our routes okay let me use this one because it's shorter so at our product route i'll paste this register route and then we modify it as we go uh, starting at the top here we don't need bcrypt so remove that one uh, we need to have this prisma we need to have this next uh, response so here we will import another uh, function get current user from we had created this at actions so at stroke actions then stroke get current user now here we export an async function it is a post request we will have the request like that then here we can uh, get the current user before anything else so here i'll say const current user uh, will be equal to we await our get uh, current user and we invoke that so import it like a default import like that awesome if a user is not an admin and uh, if a user does not exist they should not be able to create the product so here we perform a check so if we don't have current user or the current user uh, dot roar is not equal to admin then let's immediately return so here we will return and we'll say next response dot uh, error down here we get the body from request dot json then here we can get all the properties that we need from the body we will need the name then we will need the description price brand category in stock array of images so all that we'll get from the body we don't need to create a hashed password so we remove that one we will have const product is equals to await then we'll have prisma dot product dot create so here we'll have product so if it doesn't complain means that our sync was successful then here we add the description brand category we add in stock we add images price and for price here will be pass fruit and we pass the price we have an error at this meaning that i included image instead of images at our prisma schema yep we said image so i'll go ahead and change this to images that's the best we can do there and uh, still it will not recognize it so we need to stop the app and run it again just do that quickly uh, actually before you run it again make sure to run npx prisma db push and then after that we start the app and uh, yeah i think after that everything will be fine so you see the error disappeared then i can run that app again so we have created the product and all we need to do is to take this product to the user so here we just pass our product and that is our api route uh, pretty simple right now we have our backend setup where we have created the model we have created the api route we have set up um, storage so let's work on add product form we need to do that at app admin then we had this add products this is our product page for adding a product so here we add a new file we can call this add product form dot tsx so this will be a client component so use client let's go ahead and create this component the trace functional component and we'll say add uh, product form then um, for now we return only the fragments or a div maybe and i save that file so i'll come back to the page because uh, this is the beginning of stuff and uh, this will remain to be a server component we need to bring in our add product form okay before we do that let's do some stuff here we add a class name and we'll say padding generally will be eight and then right here let's remove that we will return the container component that will come from our components 
like that. Wait a minute, I check something. Where did we create the admin nav? I feel like we used the container. Did we import it from the correct stuff? Oh no. So this should have come from our app, not, not material UI. I had a feeling that we messed up there. We should have brought that from uh, this one here. So I saved that, although it worked well, uh, but let's still use our own. We need to have the form uh, wrap from our app like that, because now this is a form and we pass now our add product form. Let's click on that to also auto import it. And we have that now. So const current user, this will be equal to await get current user and we invoke that. Now this comprehends because we should mark this function as an async function like that. Now we perform a check here. We'll say if we don't have the uh, current user or if the current user dot roll is not equal to admin, uh, then we immediately return right here. We can create a component that will help us to return the errors whenever we need to. So at components, let's uh, create a new file and we can call this one null data dot tsx. Uh, it will have an interface of null data uh, props. We will only have the title. It will be a string. Now down here const nar data and we pass our nar data props like that. Uh, we set this to be equal to an arrow function uh, that will accept the title prop. So title and here we have the arrow now. We will return a div. Inside the div we will have a paragraph that will include our title like that. Then here we can have a class name and width will be full height will be 50 vh we flex and items will be center then here justify center text will be xl md text will be to excel we'll have another class name we'll set this font to be medium now down here let's go ahead and export default component which is null data and i save i go back to page now so null data and we make sure to import it we should pass the title because it expects it and we'll say oops uh, access denied awesome so if we check and try to access add products you see we have access denied so we have kind of protected this route now we need to be admins for us to get this so how do we become admins uh, we need to go to mongodb and uh, log in if you are not logged in so i will browse corrections at my database then i'll go to user and uh, from here we can be able to change this from user to admin okay so from user here and i can only do this from the uh, database okay so i change that to admin yeah so let's refresh the app now and uh, we should be able to see this box here that means that it works we no longer see this error it is loading our uh, add product form we see nothing because our add product form has nothing okay now let's handle this form this form will be massive but we will uh, finally complete it so starting with the return here actually i return our react fragments and let's enter in here we will have a heading to begin with we already have this component so heading it expects to have a title and we'll say add a product and here we can put it at the center so let's confirm that we are seeing that heading uh, it should show here there we go add a product we will have an input field so the good thing we have already created some of these components so let's have input 
now these will have several props the id will be name label as name disabled uh, it will be disabled if we have is loading as true so we don't have that property right now let's go ahead and add it so const here we include square bracket is loading and set is loading and right here we have our use state and that will come from react this should be false okay so here it's loading now does not have an error we will have register and this register will be register and this will be coming from react hook form so we don't have it we will add it let's have errors and this will be equal to errors we don't have it we will add it let's also make it to be required so to solve this and this let's come here we will say const we will destructure some stuff there and we will be getting this stuff from our use form hook which is coming from react hook form we can make sure to invoke that right here we will have field values as the type this will come from also a react hook form field values then here we can include some default uh, properties so we'll have default uh, values uh, the name will be just empty uh, description will be empty so this is actually the list that we included at our api i feel like just going and copying it from there because uh why not let's copy them then name description then i paste this okay so brand here now will be empty category will be empty in stock aburian false images uh, we will include an empty array and then we have price let it be empty so these are the default uh, values now here we will be able to destructure uh, register we'll be able to get our handle submit we'll be able to get set uh, value watch and also reset and finally here we will have form state and from form state we will be able to get the errors object i save okay now down here we have our input doesn't have any errors anymore cool let's check if that input shows and it's refreshing and there we have our input field as name awesome so let's add more we'll have input and uh why do i feel like we should have just copied these and uh just change stuff so remove one of this we'll have price as price a label is uh price uh, disabled is loading register register errors errors required and uh, for price rates have the type here is a number let's proceed we'll have another one these will be for brand so let's have brand and here the label will be brand so one thing this id should match your default one here so that they uh, work together then disabled register errors required okay that's good the next one should be a text area and uh, did we create a text area really let's see now uh, components inputs we only have input here but we will add a new file and we'll call this one uh, text area dot tsx so this text area will be so similar to our input here so i'll go ahead and copy this input come to the text area and paste it so at the top we import all this this will now be text area props um, we'll have id label we don't need the type we will have disabled required we have register we have errors then right here or instead of input we will have text area and then react right here we have a text area then here we remove the type yes let's scroll down uh, we will change now this 
input to be a text area we can remove autocomplete here um you'll have id disabled register id required press holder um, type is not there we remove it we can set some height okay max hyphen height to be 150 px we mean uh, hyphen height to be 150 px as well all this will be fine errors will be fine then we come to the uh, label so for the label everything will be the same right here let's export this component text area i save now back right here we copy one of this paste it here and this now will be our text area this one let's make sure it's also imported now this will be for the description description label description uh, is loading register errors required cool i save let's see how it looks like look we have our form there awesome now we need to include this checkbox then we will add this select a category then we will uh, come to adding an image here we will be having a checkbox so at our inputs let's add a new file and we will say custom checkbox dot tsx status functional component custom checkbox so for this one let's do everything from scratch use client here then we will need props so let's create an interface for the props interface check uh, custom checkbox props then here we'll have id which will be a string uh, we'll have a label uh, a string we will have a disabled which will be boolean and this can uh, actually be optional so question mark there finally here we will have register this one we will make use of use uh, form register this will come from react hook form uh, it will be of type field various let's hook our interface here react dot fc angle brackets uh, custom checkbox props let's pass the props here now id label disabled and register we will be returning a div and an input right here uh, type will be checkbox let me save to auto format and we work on this so here we'll have a class name and width will be full flex it flex lab flex pro gap will be two items will be at the center this input let's cheat a bit let's come here and copy all this copy and we come back custom checkbox and paste here okay let's remove autocomplete we'll have the id we'll have disabled then we will register the id let's remove this part where we say required then we'll have press holder is empty uh, the type we already included that so let's remove that save out of format so this is it then down here let's have a class name and we'll say casa here is pointer just like that okay we need to have a label right here so label and we'll simply show the label like that and here we can have html4 and we pass the id here so that when you click the label also the checkbox will be checked and then here we'll have a class name and um, red font b medium and casa b pointer do you see pointer there and that's it okay so let's save right here now we pass our custom 
uh, checkbox and here we'll have id and we'll say in stock then here we will add register to be register then finally here we'll have label to be uh, this product is in stock we have this one here okay cool amazing so now we need to add the select a category section let's do that so for that one i'll just add a div here and we'll do everything right here we'll have another div and this is where we'll say select a category let's add some class names because we need to make use of those awesome terrain css classes to make it look nice do you agree or not so with full font medium then here we'll have another one and for this one we will uh, have margin to, margin to the bottom of two font will be bold so font um, we can use semi bold works best cool now right here let's have another div now and this is where we will be having all those cool selections and you can see the way we have we have them like these in three sections these are three grids so we'll make use of um grid here to organize them nicely so let's say grid then we include the number of columns so grid dash calls dash uh, two so this is two columns this will be for the small screens but for medium and above then we'll have grid dash calls dash three make sense and then here we will have a max height and here we'll say 50 uh, vh if they overflow let them um, scroll okay so overflow y out um, right here we should map through the different categories which we don't have so we should create them so i'll save this file first of all and then uh, minimize everything here go to utils and add a new file and right here i'll say categories dot ts and we will also be using these categories at our top nav uh, for this complete app uh, we'll also use them here okay so we are using them here and also we are using them at our admin right here okay so let's add this data it will help us uh, a lot so here we'll basically export uh, const categories and we'll set this to be an array and we'll be having the different uh, objects for each of the category we'll be having a label and here we'll have all okay then here we'll have an icon and we will say md to front like that it will come from react icons md that is one we will have several so let's duplicate this one uh, about six times and you can add as many categories as you want or as few as you want depending on your use case uh, but I, I guess this is for learning purpose use alt shift bottom arrow uh, then we'll have one two three four five six uh, maybe those should be enough if not we will add or if they are excess we remove so here we'll have the font category and here we should include a font icon so i say ai fill font that is from uh, react icons ai okay then here we will have a laptop again from ai outshine then uh, laptop down here we will have desktop let's have something that looks like a desktop ai outrain uh, desktop let's come here watch 
then let's have md uh, watch uh, here tv md tv so i had like a carefree checked all these icons so if you don't find them attractive you can go and explore others there are so many icons at uh, react icons let's finally have accessories here and we'll say md um let's have a keyboard to represent the accessories i save so we are exporting that array of categories awesome let's cross that come here we will make use of it here we will have uh, categories dot map this will give us an item at a time and here we pass an arrow function carry brackets and uh, let's check if uh, item dot label is equal to all all categories uh, we don't want to show that so we return nar so return nar then down here um, we return we'll have a div so we have that and right here we will be returning a, a single category at a time and uh, i'll create a component for that because it has some simple logic for selecting and uh, so on so uh, for that again we will go to app components inputs so let's add a new file and we'll say category uh, input dot tsx i hit enter state trace functional component and here we can have category uh, input okay at the top we'll have some props so let's define an interface here and we'll have category input props we will have selected and this will be a boolean let's have a label we can have this as string an icon and we can have this as icon uh, type okay it should come from react icons let's have an on click and here we'll have a value when we click which will be a string and it will be returning void we'll have react dot uh, fc and here we pass our uh, category input props i save okay it doesn't auto format because here we should be returning something and we'll be returning a div i save now and at the top since we have some on click events this should be marked as a client component so use client here here we destructure the different props we'll have selected we will have label we'll have icon and we can set this as icon we will have on click i save to auto format like that then right here at the div we will show an icon so we will have an icon and it will accept a size prop and uh, we can set this one to 30. the other thing that this accepts is a label we'll set a label here inside a div label then we'll have a class name here and font uh, will be medium here at this div we'll have an on click and we will be calling on click here and we pass the label here we add a class name and now we style our specific item or category so this will be rounded xl we'll have a border of two padding of four have rex is call uh, we'll have items to the center we'll have a gap of two hover full colon border uh, hyphen straight uh, hyphen 500 when we hover then uh, let's have a transition finally here 
can have cursor as pointer and we will change the style depending on whether this is selected or not so i'll change whatever we have at the end and include back ticks uh, i'll open the bracket here and close it here so right here we can have dynamic styles using selected like that and here if it's selected we'll have border uh, hyphen straight hyphen uh, 500 and then right here uh, border uh, hyphen straight uh, hyphen 200 so i save now now we have this category input let's make use of it in our form here we will return our category input it's self-closing and it expects uh, several props we will have on click so when we click here uh, we will receive a category we will set a custom value and we provide a key which will be category and we will set this to be category let's come at the top before our return here we'll say const category uh, will be equal to uh, watch and here we invoke and we pass category we'll make use of this return at the bottom again we'll say selected we'll set this to be equal to category and if this category is equal to item dot label now right here we'll have a label item dot label here we'll be having an icon and the icon will be item dot icon um this is complaining this should be custom value so we don't have it yet uh, let's define it i'll come at the very top first of all i'll remove this import which was a mistake and below this let's have const uh, custom value okay set custom value not custom value and here we'll set this to be equal to we will be receiving an id which will be a string and here we'll be receiving a value uh, which will be any so this is the category that we pass here and this is the value that we get okay i set this to be an arrow function here set value now this is coming from our react hook form right here and we are now setting the category value so that it updates uh, in our form data we will pass the id and we pass the value and right here we pass some options so we'll say should validate and we'll set this to true uh, should dirty we'll set this to true and uh, should touch we'll set this to true and uh, yeah now at the bottom we have this category input which is custom right here and the key can be the label because it's unique so item dot label and uh, right here we'll have a class name and the class name can be called hyphen span okay so why is this drawing an error i misspelled i save so at this point we should be able to see our categories because we are passing the label and so on so let's see what we are working on here and there we go we have these categories there uh, they don't have a gap we can select look um we can add a gap of three i save and there we go awesome now we have that section the next big section is this one for selecting images so let's handle it why not i'll add another div we will have two sections here we'll have a div where we have the description and we have a div here again now right here we'll have a class name and width will be full flex it flex will be column let's add a flex uh, wrap and let's add a gap of four okay now for this first part let's have a div class name here font hyphen 
bold so i can copy the text from here we'll have another div here you can come here copy that paste there i can have a class name a uh, text small i save there we go so now let's work on selecting uh, an image uh, we might need to create several components and also we need the colors i'll go back to utils here and i'll create a new file called colors.ts and here we will export const colors to be equal to these we pass an object here and we'll have a color for each color we'll also have the color code for this one let's have a comma there let's have a comma here and we'll have an image this will be null so this is how uh, one color will look like we need several you can add like eight of them let's have three four five six seven eight here let's have silver color code c0 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 let's have gray 80 80 80 80 let's have red ff 0 0 0 0 gold ffd 7 0 0 let's have blue 0 0 0 0 ff let's have a uh, graph so these are like the common colors when it comes to electronics like mobiles uh, and so on so let's add white so that they are eight so white can actually start it's a very popular color ff 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 i save now we have the colors and we will need to map through them let's come back here we had this div here we will map through the colors here so you'll say colors dot map and we invoke that we'll be passing the item and the index and here we will be having an arrow function that returns something so return we will return a component for now let's have a uh, react fragments these colors let's bring it in from our utils and here for this div let's have a class name and here we'll say grid grid calls will be two and a gap of three okay fix this div here i'll go ahead and save so for now we are not returning anything but we should return a component and i'm going to call this component select color i'll go to app components inputs and add a new file i'll say uh, select color dot tsx uh, let's have an interface here of select a color props here we will be getting an item and this item will be of type image type so we don't have this type uh, let's create it at our add form so right here let's add some types there we will export type image type this will be equal to uh, color of type string color code this will also be of type string and amazingly we also have the image here which will be of type file or it can be null now this is the image type that we select but we will also have the one that we have uploaded so here let's have another one of um, uploaded image type uploaded image type color will be string color code will be string now here we will only be getting the string from our db or from <laughs> firebase storage okay so now we have those now back here we can import this image type from our add product form like that and we'll have uh, a function called add image to state and for this one it is a function therefore we use an arrow function here that returns void and here we'll have a value it will be of image type 
now here we'll also have remove image from state this will have a value and image type and we return void as well here we'll have is product created and this will be a boolean this should have void i save this is just the props and their types so right here select a uh, color let's pass the props or the interface so here react dot f c angle brackets our select color props let's pass all the structure the different props the item the add image to state the remove image from state and is product created so here for now let's have an empty fragment like that so before our return statement let's create some state so const we will have is selected and set is selected false here let's import this one from react and another state that we will add file and set file and right here we will simply say use state and we include its type it can be a file or it can be null and we invoke our use state initially the file will be null now here let's have a use effect and for this use effect we'll be checking whether the product has already been created or not so if the product has been created uh, then we reset our state okay so here uh, let's have that and we must have a dependency array and we will check for is product created let's perform a check if is product is created let's reset our state so set is selected and we'll set that to false and also let's reset our file and we'll set this one to null let's save that one to auto format now down here i am going to create some helper uh, methods that we will use so const and we will call handle uh, file change so i make use of use callback to optimize it just like that uh, remember use callback always has some dependency array also here and here we will be receiving a value and the value here will be the file so here it will be of type file and then here we will be having set file so we update our state now here we were resetting the state here we are updating the state and we will set this to value also we will call add image uh, to state we will create this function later on so here we will have the item and image will be having a value so remember with color we are handling both the color and also the image so here let's spread the item and we add the image so here we have handled our file change so let me create a function here called handle uh, check and here we can also make use of use callback we will set is selected we will call e dot target uh, dot checked so this will tell us whether the checkbox is checked or not and then we can conditionally uh, render our ui so here we are receiving an event and the event is of type react dot change event and then angle bracket we pass html input element so when we check uh, we will show this right here and this will help us to upload a file okay as all select one and then when we uncheck we want to clear it so that we can upload again we will perform an if uh, statement if we get an event and what we get is that e dot target um, dot checked is false that means that we have unchecked all we want to do is to clear the state so set the file uh, to null and here we will remove the image from state so we simply remove it from the data that we would save in the database so this and these will be manipulating our form data this one this data okay cool so it will make sense uh, once we complete it
So now we have those functions that will really help us and we can continue at the bottom here. We will return a div. We'll have another div and let's add the class name for this one. So class name grid, let's say grid hyphen calls hyphen one, it will be one column. But for MD, we will be having two columns. So grid hyphen calls hyphen one. And then here we'll have an overflow of y to be outer we'll have border a custom one 1.2 px we'll have a border color so border straight uh, to be 200 and items center and padding of two so that is the parent div we have all those classes i save to outer format then we have this div now and we will have a class name for this one we will flex and flex will be in a row let's have a gap of two let's also have items at the center a height which will be a custom height of uh, 60 px okay now here we will add this part where we have this checkbox input it will have an id of item dot color we'll be having the type will be checkbox we'll check if is checked so if it's checked we will say here is selected so it's a controlled uh, input so here we will also pass 100 check we'll have a class name and we will say casa pointer and then we'll have a label and the label will be having the item dot color another thing is that yeah we will be having html4 and these will be for item dot color let's have a class name and we'll have font as medium casa as pointer after the label we have this div after that div now some react fragments and for this react fragments uh, we will perform some checks we'll say is selected so this uh, checks if the input is selected if there is no file so if it's selected and there is no file then we'll proceed and and we will show something right here and whatever we will show now it's a div so if i select now that div will show this section here where we have uh, the image selection so we will do that in its separate component so for now let's have a class name here we'll have a call hyphen span of two and then text will be at the center now let's create a component that will select the image and then we will add it here so at our inputs and we'll say select image dot tsx let's make this to be a use client uh, let's start with an interface here here we'll have items optional then this will be of image type okay not items but item so we get an item we will also pass handle file change so it will receive the value and the value here will be the file so type file but it will be returning void now here let's create that component the trace functional component and we will say select image we pass the interface here then right here let's destructure our props here item and handle file change let's have a div so here we will make use of uh, a library called react drop zone uh, we need to install it so you can copy that and install and then you can read documentation on how it's used but basically we just need to import this user drop zone from react drop zone so we will basically need that to import it we import that hook and then uh, we will have this on drop and then we will do something there and then we'll get all this get root props get input and uh yeah and uh we will make use of them right here so let me copy some of these 
I'll paste before our return statement. Let's import use callback. Let's add the types for accepted uh, files. These will be an array of file and we will do something right here. So once we drag and drop, we'll check if our accepted files dot length is uh, greater than zero. We only need one, so we will take the first one. So here we'll have handle file change. This should be handle. That's why I'm getting errors here. We get the first file by getting our accepted files and we access the first one. So we pass the file to handle file change that will be received at our here. Then that will later be passed to our parent right here. So we haven't created add image to state, but we will. So let's continue here. We have all this, uh, we'll have on drop and then we can specify the kind of files that we want. So here we can add accept and we'll say full colon object. So image like that. And then we say asterisk, then full colon. And this full colon should be out here. Dot JPEG and all dot PNG. So if you upload a different uh, file format, then it will not work. So I save and this is now uh, use drop zone like that. Now let's come to our return. So right here, we'll use card bracket and then we will spread get root props and we invoke that. In here, we will have an input uh, which is self closing. We will pass some props, get uh, input props like that and we invoke it. So those props will be automatically added right here we will perform a check using is drag active. So if we are dragging, uh, then we can specify where we want you to drop the image. We will have a paragraph uh, like that, and you can say drop uh, the image here. Then here we'll have else. If we are not dragging, we'll show the plus button. So let's have a paragraph here. We'll say plus then item uh, dot color here image so i save we need to style this box so let's have a class name and right here we'll have a border of two then border can be straight hyphen 400 uh, padding will be two then we'll have a border dashed cursor will be pointer text will be small uh, font will be normal text will be uh, straight and then here 400 then flex let's have items to the center and we justify to the center awesome so those are the styles for uh, this particular box and we export our select image so that is it uh, all we are doing here is making use of use drop zone to drag and drop an image or to select the image file now that we have this, let's come back to our select color and we should use it here. Select uh, image from select image. Uh, it accepts the item or it expects us to pass the item. It expects us to pass handle file change and this will be handle file change. And this function here, it's the one that is here after this. Let's check if we have the file. So if file exists, we show a div like that. And here we will show the uh, name of the file. So to make sure that they can confirm that the file has been selected. So file uh, dot name, we show the name of the file. Then right here, we will show a button to cancel that file. So here, we will have a button. Remember, we already created a button component in previous uh, uh, episodes. This expects us to have a label and we can say cancel. And then right here, when we click this, um, we will simply call this arrow function and it will reset the file. So it will set the file to null. And right here, 
it will remove the image from the state so it will remove the image from the state we pass the item this will be a small button and also it will be outlined it's okay let's come here and add some classes so class name we will flex flex here will be in a row and then we'll have a gap of two and text will be small call hyphen span will be two and items will be at the center we justify between awesome let's also add a class name here and we will say that the width here is uh, 70 px i save and that is our select color component now we need to hook all this so our select color we need to hook it up at our add product form now here we will return a single component which is our select color component from our app like that let's add various props it needs to have a key and let that be the index then it requires us to pass the item that will be the item that we are mapping through remember we have these colors then we have each color at a time then here we will have add image to state we don't have this function so for now let's pass this function that returns nothing we also need to have remove image from state so these are functions that we don't have yet so uh, let's see first of all how it will look like and then here we have is product created let's for now say true or false okay false but here we should pass something that is dynamic so i save and that is our select color right there if i come here go here um there we go and they are all displaying downwards look i can select um uh, let's try to drag and drop a file here so i try and drag look drop the image here and it's selected and it cancels awesome it's working well but now it's not updating the data up there at our form data another thing i i think this is not what we wanted we wanted two columns and i found that we added a comma here so just remove that and save now there we go we have two of them awesome and uh, if you check here it's select color i don't know why i added these because it's one column anyways so it's still two and works very nice okay so now we need to complete uh, image selection and adding it to state by uh, defining these particular functions so let's create these functions uh, so at the very top uh, right here we have is roading let's also add const images then set images and right here use state and we pass our image type like that all null then we invoke that i save to auto format then here we will be having const uh, is product created then we'll set is a uh, product created we'll have use state we invoke it and pass false the default okay now this is product created is the one that we will pass down here to check whether product is created or not now maybe after use form hook here we can create an effect so use effect and then inside here we will call set custom value so set custom value like we called it at the bottom like we called it here we called the key category and the value so we are doing the same we will call this the custom value and we will set uh, images that is the key and then here we pass images from the state so if images changes then we also update our state another thing once we create the product we want to clear everything so we make use of a use effect here and here we will check for is product created once a product is created um, we want to reset our input fields 
and also to clear other states so here we'll say if is product created let's check if it's true if it's true then we reset our input fields reset like that remember we have reset from here so it will help to reset it we set images to null we uh, set is product created now to false cool i save now let's create our helper functions we can create them uh, before the return statement right here so we'll say const add image to state uh, we make use of the use callback hook then we will obviously have this and instead of me keeping on typing this one we can duplicate it so alt shift bottom arrow and this will be uh, remove image from state and remember the state is the one that we have here of these images and when the image change this use effect will update it to our react hook form data i hope that cycle makes sense okay okay here to add it's easy so we'll set images we invoke and here we can usually pass an arrow function and we'll have access to our previous state then here we will check we will check if we don't have the previous state so if previous state is null then we will simply return the new state which is an array of our value and our value it's the uh, selected image so value here then image type the type okay now down here uh, else if we already have some previous state then we will just spread the existing one so we will take the previous value and we add our new value and that is how we can simply uh, add an image to our state so i'll copy that and this is what we should pass here add image to state so now let's remove image from state right here again here we'll get the value and it will be of image type and then right here we again call set images same cycle we get the previous state we can make use of it uh, right here at the bottom we return previous then right here let's perform some checks so if we have previous state if we have previous state filter out the image that we want to remove using the filter array method so we'll say const filtered images will be equal to previous dot filter we invoke this and this will give us an item at a time and in here we can return the item dot color uh, that is not equal to value dot color and uh, now down here we simply return uh, the filtered images now we pass this remove from state uh, right here okay cool let's rock console dot rog of images uh right that let's just specify images something like that okay so let's test it out let's open the console here let's go to console now you see images undefined let's select there then let's select an image let's take that one open whoa it's not working uh, actually it's working i just refreshed the page and you can see it's adding the images here to state so white color and then the image file right here this is coming from our use react drop zone then here let's uh, let's approach the same thing but now black here and look now we have two of them two images now if i uncheck this uh, it's not logging to console uh, but it should remove it so we should not have this r function but pass it directly like that so we can test it now uh, i will refresh and let's select an image 
this one open so let's select another one so that we clearly see what is happening so we have to then we uncheck then we have one awesome it's working and when we cancel we have zero so that is good because we are able to uh, select the images and multiple images here and uh, all that remains is to take all the data from here and submit it so let's add a submit button uh, at the very bottom before this fragment we can have uh, a button this comes from our components it's self-closing and it accepts a label uh, will dynamically display this so it's loading so if it's loading the label will be loading or it will be add product and at the end here uh, we can have an on click and we pass a handle submit and here we'll pass on submit this on submit we haven't created it yet but we will in a minute and uh yeah this is our button there now let's come at the top that handle submit comes from our this one our react hook form now after the effects we can come right here and here we'll create a function that will help us to submit that form so we'll say const and uh, we'll say on submit and full colon this will be of uh, type submit handler from react hook form then we pass field values here so field values and then right here uh, we set this to be equal to and here we'll be able to receive the data from react hook form now to test this let's console.rog this data so console.rog of our form data and here we pass our data i save and now these are disappeared and let's see what we have so look we have add button so let's remove this images log since we are no longer using it why is it this one so that our console is just clean I save now and we clear console let's try to submit without anything fast so we try to add and look all these are required awesome and for these ones we will be adding checks before we even submit the data so that you don't uh, submit empty form uh, this is good so let's test let's say this is an iphone any price it's so expensive and then brand so you can specify the price here is in dollars or something like that okay brand um apple then description apple phone called iphone that's a good enough <laughs> description in in stock let's select this is a phone uh let's select let's upload an image here black and uh we will have an example image as our banner image now if we try to submit it should uh show us the data here so add and look okay we are not yet clearing everything but we have this so look we have brand as apple categories phone description in stock true name price and image so we are getting all the data when we click the submit button all that remains is to come here and what we will do is to first upload images to firebase uh -huh, fb for firebase and then uh, once it's successful we'll save product to mongodb so saving the product to mongodb is an easy part uh, while this might involve some uh, workout but uh, the documentation is clear so nothing to worry about uh, for example uh, if we come right here and search for firebase image upload uh, everything is uh, online on the documentation you will see we have upload files uh, with cloud storage and here we have different ways of uploading the files up blob file etc uh, we have right here manage uploads and here you can be able to see when upload is on when it's post and so on and this is what uh, i want us to use right here uh, when upload has completed we will be able to get the download url uh, from firebase and then that download url is the one that we save on our mongodb so we will uh, be working on a code like this it will look similar to this we will get the storage storage ref uh, we'll get a prod task um, and then we will have this uh, upload task dot on then we will have uh, 
upload progress error and when it's done we'll get that url and we'll use that url to save uh, the image information to our own database okay let's try this and see how it goes so to begin with set loading to true and then we will create a variable we will say let uh, uploaded images be equal to uh, an empty array and the type for this one will be uploaded image type and this will be an array of that okay so it will be an array of strings so once we upload the image successfully we will be able to update uh, this particular array uh, make sense and then now down here let's perform a check on categories so if we don't have data dot category uh, let's go ahead and uh, throw an error here or return an error so we will set loading to false because we are no longer uh, creating the product because we have this error and then right here we can re immediately return so it won't execute the code below uh, toast dot uh, error and right here we will have now the error and we can say category uh, is not selected so we don't want to have a product that don't have a category so let's bring that in and then we will do the same for images so if we don't have any image then we draw an error so here we'll say if we don't have data dot images and we can say all if data dot images and then here dot length um, is zero we don't have even one image then we return we must have at least one product image so we set is loading to false and we immediately return here so we return toast dot error and we can say that no selected image okay now after that we come right here and we will create a function we can say const handle image uploads this will be an async function and we can set it to be an arrow function just like this and um, at this point we can let the user know that we are creating the product uh, because uploading images especially if they are big ones it might take uh, some time so we can say creating a product so we toast that now in here we have to upload a uh, each image at a time remember we have multiple images let's first have a try and catch block then we start with try here and we need to loop over all the images so that we upload each at a time so here we'll say for const item off then we'll have data dot images so we get an item each time we'll say if item uh, dot image remember this data dot images uh, each image has color color code and image so we get the image if we have that image then we'll go ahead and start now working with firebase right here and uh, we can get the file name and we want the file name to be unique therefore we will say this const our uh, file name will be equal to and we construct a new date so new date we invoke that and we get the time get time we invoke that we concatenate strings or join them we can use a hyphen and right here now we include the actual name of the image item dot image dot name uh, so why do we do this sometimes a person might have images with the same name so we don't want the names to collide at our firebase storage therefore we add this to make the name unique okay so we get the file name like that and then here we get the uh, firebase storage so we'll do this by saying storage uh, is equals to get storage and right here we pass our firebase up so this get storage should come from uh, firebase but it's not being suggested so let's just import it manually because uh, why not i can just say import and we will destructure something from then we'll have firebase stroke uh, storage and what are we getting from here get storage so we get the firebase storage then uh, 
let's go back right here i'll get a storage reference so i'll say a const storage ref will be equal to we use a ref uh, function from firebase storage now that is auto imported make sure yours is imported too and we pass the storage uh, comma and then right here we pass the path that we want our uh, product to be saved at so we will want it to be inside the products folder so right here let's use backticks so that we can uh, later on read a variable in here so we'll have products so this is the um, path that will be at our firebase storage so we will have a folder called products and then inside that folder we will be creating a new file uh, with the file name so here we pass the file name so file name uh, just like that now we have the storage ref for uh, that particular file now right here we will say const we will get an object called upload task and we will set this to be equal to uh, upload uh, bytes resumable and then we invoke that and we pass our storage ref like that and then we include a comma there and we'll say item uh, dot image okay so we'll create a promise and i'll say await a new promise uh, like this and we'll say here it's a void we invoke and we pass an arrow function just like this and here we will have resolve and reject so when a prod is successful we will call resolve when we have an error we will call reject and we won't proceed to creating the product because there was issues while creating the images okay so here now let's do this we will now use upload task this logic is actually at our docs here uh, we want to have something like this upload task dot on state changed then we will have a snapshot and we will track the progress if we have an error we show the error if it's successful we will be able to get the image url so that's basically it that's what we are doing here now so upload dot on and then we invoke this one uh, the first parameter here is state changed and right here a snapshot and here we pass an arrow function and we can be able to track the progress using this snapshot actually i'll just copy this code here i'll copy that and i can paste it here so here we have this const progress and you are saying snapshot uh, dot bytes transferred stroke snapshot uh, dot short of bytes then we get the percentage then these will log the percentage of the upload on our console uh, snapshot dot state uh, if it's post if upload is post you can do something there if it's running you can do something there then after this snapshot we will have uh, a part where we have the error and that is basically this one here so i can copy that and paste it here and if we have an error we want to do something right here so for unsuccessful uploads we want to reject so we want to reject the promise so we'll say reject then we pass the error there and then right here uh, we can say console uh, dot log and we'll say error uploading image and right here we pass the actual error so you can see that error on the console the last part is this one right here where now if it's successful uh we handle successful uploads so here i'll just copy this one and i'll make use of it here so i think we should bring this in so we import it from firebase storage and here we'll be able to get the url let me just remove this message there when it's successful we want to resolve so we call resolve and and then right here we want to uh, update our array right here uh, right here so we update our uploaded images uh, array uh, right here uh, we will have now uh, uploaded images so we'll say dot push because it's an array and what do we push here so we will push an object and we spread the existing item so this is the current uh, item which has the color the color code and the image 
but we will change the value of the image now to be a string and the string will be now our download url and this url is simply a link to uh, our uploaded image okay so we do that we can log this to the console we resolve uh, we, you can see here we are tapping at dot then so after this dot then we can also tap dot catch we will have the error here we can reject so we'll call reject and we pass the error here uh, we can log something to the console error getting the downloadable url so this is how we are getting the download url okay i hope all this uh, method here makes sense so that is our method and also we have this uh, promise that we are creating so yeah that's basically it we had this try right here that will try to upload the images so we also have the catch right here so let's complete this cut right here we can set is loading here to false and right here we will console.log uh, we can say error handling image uploads and right here we have the error cool now right here we can also return and we will toast a message toast dot error you can say an error card uh, actually you can just say error handling image approach as well so just like that and now we have completed this particular function from the very top this handle image approach okay so we toast this to let the users know that this will take time then we try if it fails we catch down here and then right here we loop over each of the images and if we have the image then we go ahead and get all these functions from uh, firebase and some we create like the file name for uniqueness and here we create a new promise so that uh, everything else uh, waits uh, for this to complete and we have this upload task dot on and it will check when the state is changed when it's in progress when it's post and so on if you want to know or to have a load or something like that you can make use of this if you have an error then we reject the promise if it's successful we accept the promise by calling resolve but also we update our array of uh, uploaded images now all we need to do is to call this particular function and then test it so after this function below here are uh, still within our on submit function i know these brackets might be confusing that's why i'm trying to be just uh, clear here uh, we will await now we will call await our handle image uploads and we call that one and now here if it's uh, successful we will be able to have our uploaded images and therefore here let's have product data to be equal to we spread the existing data but we update our images to be our uploaded images so uploaded images like that now right here we can just drop these product data to the console and see if it works so we'll say console uh, dot log of our product data i save and now we can test and check the product data and also see if the image is uploaded so back here uh, let's go to our app let's call a refresh there now i'll come to storage here and see if the images that we upload will be added right here so there is no fire right now okay so here let's create a, a dummy product watch price of this watch is a hundred dollars uh brand i don't know brands uh any description any description it's in stock we want to have a watch and let's upload a white watch so we click on the banner image it's just for testing all this nothing serious now we should pay close attention to the console when i click add product and product creating product please wait 
and you can see approved 0% done uh, approved is 22% done 66% 98% 100% done uh, approved is running and then here we get the product data at the end of it all and also we get this file available at uh, this particular storage and if i visit this storage or if i visit this link open in a new tab we get to that particular image and there it is so i think it was successfully uploaded if we check our product data you will see we have images and array and if i expand we have the color as white the color code and also we have the image link and this product data is now what we will save in our own mongodb so now if you go to storage here let's refresh the page i guess so let's refresh here we should have uh, the product added here there we go we have products and when we click on this one uh, we will have one image and it's our own image and you can see here we have this timestamp then banner hyphen image uh, because we added this timestamp using the date now it's unique right there so this is awesome because we are able to upload images and update our product data now all we need to do is to call axios and call our own backend api in order to save this product data in our own mongodb database and uh, that is pretty easy we just need to say here axios dot post and we invoke that we need to pass the endpoint stroke api and then stroke product then right here we pass our product data and now we can tap the dot then method and we invoke like that now here we will toast a message toast uh, dot success the product was created and then right here we will say uh, set is product created and we'll set this one to true when it's true it will clear the form state awesome and then right here we can call router dot refresh and we invoke that now uh, we don't have this router so i'll come at the top here we should create it we just say const router uh, will be equal to use router from next navigation we invoke that and let this be at the top there awesome back to our axios call here we refresh and uh, we can also call the dot catch method so here dot catch then here we'll have our error and we can do something with it right here so we will toast an error toast dot error uh we'll say something went wrong okay now right here we can have dot finally and we can uh, set is loading to false so here and let's call this and we set is loading to false i save so we can test it out and see if our mongodb saving works tv uh price one thousand dollars lg lg desk that one then tv let's say this is now a gray image we select the image we add it there then we add loading creating product please wait it's there it's running it's running and uh fire available at that uh still loading and product created awesome so that means that now we have that product in our mongodb and let's go to mongodb and check so here mongodb uh, another thing that we should do is to test whether it's uploading multiple images so let's create another product phone price thousand dollars iphone iphone 14 it's a phone let's upload a white image a white image we can just select glare and have the glare one open so we want to see if it will be able to upload the two images so let's upload and uh fire uploaded it completed the first one then it started the second one and finished so it's working this is awesome so now if we go to mongodb here if we click on products here 
um, you'll see we have the TV, LG, images, object, and it has a Firebase URL. Awesome. And then we have this phone, iPhone, the one that we added now. Then here we have two of them. This one and this one. Really cool. Now this is working well. And if we go to our, our Firebase storage, now we should have four images. So let's refresh there and let's see look we have four images we have this iphone 14 white iphone 14 gray we have the banner image and the banner image so this is all working well and uh, that is how we can handle image uploads and how we can create our product okay now i want us to work on our rich data tables so we will work on manage products uh, and also we will work on manage orders okay um to begin with we need to be able to get our products from the database and also to be able to get our orders from the database so we will create some helper functions that will help us do that so in our code we need to go to actions so here we'll say get products.ts and for this get products uh, we will also make use of it at our home because we will use it to get our products remember we were using a dummy array for all these products right here so we need to be able to get the products and uh, uh, we will also be able to filter them uh, depending on the category that we will be selecting here so we need to consider that uh, while creating our function so let's move on here the first thing is to import prisma now here we will export an interface right here we'll call it i product uh, params and here we will pass category and it will be optional string and it can also be null we'll have a search term which is optional string it can also be null now down here let's export a default uh, sync function called get products and we will be receiving a parameter so we'll say params here and here they will be of type i product params and then we come in here so let's try and catch this one so try catch if we have an error we will simply throw an error so we'll say throw a new error to be error error can be of type any and then we come in here now we will get the category and the search term from our params so we'll say const we destructure the category and also search term and all this will come from params uh, this is complaining because we need to include an a right there we can say let search string be equal to our search term so here we will check if we have the search term and we'll say if the search term is empty so if we don't have uh, the search term here we'll set the search string uh, to be an empty string okay and then right here we will create a variable called let query initially this will be just an empty object and it can be of type any and if we have a category we will update our query object so here we'll say if we have a category we will come right here and we'll set query dot category to be category our query object will no longer be empty it will be having uh, a category in it so down here this is how you can get uh, the products we'll say const products will be equal to uh, we await prisma uh, dot product uh, dot find many we invoke that we pass an object and here we will say where we spread our query object and then right here we pass or we pass an array we include the logic for the search so we will check the name when uh, doing the search and right here we will say if the name will contain the search string and the mode will be insensitive so whether you include with caps or uh, small letters will still get uh, that particular product 
then we will also want to check our description so description and we'll have the same same properties right here if the description contain the search string and insensitive cool now after where right here we'll include a comma and we'll say include when getting the product let us also include the reviews for this product so include reviews and for the reviews let's include the user because we want to know the user who created that review so user true and also we can order by right here order by would say created date descending before now our error before we get out of this block let's return our product just like that okay so we have written the logic for both the search and query and we are getting the product depending on whether we have the query and also whether we have the search string awesome now that is for the products uh, let's create another one here for the orders i'll add a new file and we'll say get orders.ts we'll start by bringing in prisma so import prisma from uh, at libs and then prisma db we will export a uh, default a sync function called get orders we invoke it and do something right here we try and catch uh, we'll have const orders uh, to be equal to we await we'll say prisma uh, dot order dot find many we invoke that and we pass an object and we'll say include the user so user will be true we'll say order by and we can say created date descending desk and we simply return it so here return orders pretty easy right i save that function i can cross these files minimize everything you can go to app admin then we go to manage products right here let's create a new file and we can call it manage products client you can include client or not so dot tsx status functional component manage products are client and then at the very top let's make sure to include use client like that here let us return a div manage products i save that file for now then go to page here and from here instead of this we will return our, our component here now in this particular file is where we will get our, our products so let's say const products will be equal to and we simply await get products we get it from there and we should invoke it and remember we should pass category here and we will set it to null now right here we will have a sync so that this await doesn't throw an error also we can get our user current user will be equal to await and we will call our get current user and we invoke that right here we can check whether we have a user so i can just go to add product then page and then i'll copy this logic copy come here and i'll paste it here we import this null data component and there we go so for this product we'll pass it as a plop to manage products client so uh, products uh, will be equal to and right here we pass our product and that is all we need to do at this file for the page so let's go to manage products client this is drawing an error because we haven't defined an interface so right here let's add an interface and we'll say manage products are client props and in here products the type will be product uh, from prisma and right here we make sure that it's an array so i go ahead and save let's include a full colon and it will say react dot fc and we pass our manage uh, products client 
props right here let's destructure that so products okay so we have created our default creation now we need to create our, our data table right here for us to move fast and create a very nice data table uh, we will make use of material ui so if you go to the browser search for material ui uh, i want us to make use of this particular library to create our, our data tables so if you go to docs we can click on material ui here and we have installation we need to run this command to install everything i'll click on that uh, pop the terminal using Control j or command j and then right here i'll go on this one and paste so i'll install all these at mui material at emotion stroke react at emotion stroke styled and hit enter as this installs uh, we can come back here we can search for data table right here or search for table if you search for table we get this and look we have the basic table you scroll down we have this now data table uh, i think this is what we want and this is a, a very rich data tables because you can do a bunch of stuff you are able to filter you are able to select here sort ascending and sort you are able to manage columns hide some of them and show some of them uh, let me show you and so on look we can hide the id column right there we can show it and this is really cool so this is what we will use so we already have the code right here on how we can do it so just copy this code and then i come back right here and i'll paste that code right here so let's go ahead and import this so i'll say import i'll destructure data grid uh, this will come from x hyphen data hyphen grid uh, so the thing is we also need to install this at mui x uh, data grid so just copy that and i'll say npm i and i paste that i don't know why it shows at the bottom here but if i hit enter it will still install so install uh, at mui stroke x hyphen data hyphen grid and that should get rid of this error so once it completes you can see uh, that error has disappeared so now the error that we have is for the rows and columns so first of all i'll save to auto format that file and then we can work on these two so before our return statement we will check if we have the products so we'll say if we have the products we will go ahead and do something right here let's create a variable for our rows so i'll say let rows of type any be equal to an empty array so initially rows will be an empty array and then right here we can update our rows if we have the products so we'll say our rows will be equal to products dot uh, map we invoke this here we will get a product at a time and we can return something right here we will return an object the object will have an id the id will be our product dot id then we will be having a name product dot name we will be having price product dot price and uh, actually we should format the price so we had a util for format price we can call it right here so format uh, price we import it and we pass this product dot price in there next uh, will be category product dot category next we will have the brand let's have product dot brand and then right here in stock we will have product dot in stock images and we'll have product dot images like that really cool so i save to auto format for each of the row we'll be having an id a name a price category a brand and in stock and an image the next step is to add the columns so after this if statement right here i'll say const columns 
will be grid call def this will come from our muix data grid so bring in that one so columns of type this one and it will be an array will be equal to an array so to begin with we will be starting with the uh, id so we'll say field is id header name will be id in caps we can specify the width and the width here will be 220 after that we'll be having the name okay here we should be having a comma and this field should be the same as the ones that you included here the properties that you included here are uh, the keys so field id should be same as this one name should be the same as this one so that under this field will be showing that particular product name okay all under this column we show that particular product name under this column we show that particular product id and so on so we'll have the columns for each of these properties okay so down here the width will be a hundred i want us to add something different right here and uh, that is because we want to include some styles to our price so if i check the complete one right here we want the price here under it to be bold and for us to add the styles we need to uh, use some tailwind css for this particular uh, column so this is the column here so what we can do is to add a property here called render cell and we will be having an r function just like this right here we'll be able to receive params and then right here we can be able to return we invoke that and we can pass a div in here now to show the actual data let's use curly brackets and we will use params here dot row then dot price so we get the price like that and now we are able to add some styles for this one so we can add a class name and we can say font hyphen bold and then text straight we will say 800 so that is for price we get this we include this render cell so that we can display a custom styled data there so let me copy this one here and we will have category after that so control v and we will also have brand so let's do this this will be category this will be category let's say 100 header name will be a uh, brand the width 100 uh, the next one it's whether a product is in stock or not i can just duplicate that as well here we will have in stock header name in stock and the width here can be 100 or maybe about 120 and we will also call render cell so let me copy this one from here so i copy that one and here now we'll have a comma and paste that render cell let me first save out of format and right here we will show a dvs uh, but for the content we will check params dot show dot in stock and if this one is true we'll be able to return something right here we can say in stock else we'll say out of stock okay for now let's have that we'll come back and style it nicely now lastly we'll have another field for our actions right here so for this one we'll say it's action actions uh, width can be 200 and uh, also we'll have render cell so let's copy this one and use it here paste this is render let me save out of format and for this render cell uh, for now let's just remove this and we can say action here so this is where we can have delete a product and so on so we'll come back to it also we can remove this class name from there as well as from here and i save 
Uh, so right now we should be able to have something and then maybe we can make it better. Okay, let's go on admin dashboard, manage products and we get an error when trying to get the product. So here you can see unknown argument contain. Did you mean contains? So let's check that. Okay, this is contains. This is contains. Let's save. Hit a refresh. And look, we have a table with our current products that are in our database, which is really cool. And you can see under price, these are in bold. We can filter and we can hide columns. For example, let's hide uh, price. We can show, we can show or so this is really cool. So we just need to make this look like this one. So we'll add some actions like these ones. For in stock, we'll show something like this. And we can be able to switch whether the product is in stock or not. Like that. Uh, really cool. And then we also decrease its size so that it fits nicely. Uh, starting with our data grid, you can control the page size using these options. So if you want to show uh, up to 20 products, you can do that. And if you want for them to be more right here by default, uh, you can do that. And then right here, you can set a page size of nine. Refresh. Uh, look, we have rows per page as nine and you can go up to 20. And then let's add a header. So I'll add a div and I'll include the heading component from our app component right here we'll have the title as manage products and then we can center everything here okay that is good let's add a class name here so we'll have class name and margin to the bottom will be four and then right here margin to the top will be eight let's wrap this data grid with a div so right here i'll say div and our data grid will go in there saved auto format and then right here actually i'll add an inline style here we'll set the height uh, to be 600 and then here we'll set the width uh, to be a hundred percent like that for this parent div let's add a class name we'll say max uh, hyphen width so the maximum width for this data table will go up to uh, 11 50 px then here we'll say margin outer and text will be xl i go ahead and save so let's check it out we have a maximum width and also uh, we have a height for the data table up to this point that will occupy up to nine items so now for us to show this status we'll create a new component uh, that we can reuse let me go to app components and i can create it at the root here I'll say status dot tsx status functional component and we'll say status interface status props will be receiving the text whether it's in stock or out of stock so this will be a string will be receiving an icon of type icon type from react icons this one okay cool and then will be receiving the background color for this particular status so i'll do it like that and also i'll be receiving the color and i'll do it like that here let's make sure that this knows of our uh, interface so react.fc and right here we pass the uh, status props let's come here and destructure uh, the text Let's also destructure the icon and we set this one to icon. Let's also have the BG and the color. We will return a div and in here we'll have the text and at the end here we will show the icon which can have a prop of size. So let's have size here. We set this to 15. For this div, let's add a cross name so right here um, we can read the bg using the money sign 
then curly brackets bg we can also read the kara in the same way then we'll add some few more styles uh, padding along the x-axis will be one then it will be rounded then we'll flex the items items will go to the center and uh, let's have a gap of one and that's all for this particular component i saved out of format and let's make use of it now at our manage products so right here where we had in stock and out of stock uh, instead of that we will return the status component so status uh, from our app component so i import it and right here it expects us to pass the text will be in stock it also want us to have the icon and for this one we'll use md done from react icon so click on it to auto import and then the bg uh, will say bg till 200 and the color here will be text till 700 i save to auto format we'll have a similar one so i'll copy that one paste it here and whatever we will do is change this to be out of stock then these will be md close make sure to import it then this one will be rows instead of teal so control d rows and that's it so let's save and see if it came along look in stock this one didn't work out well so okay there we go so it has updated so we have in stock and out of stock let's work on our actions so for actions we'll create a new component at our components so i can minimize everything up components and we add a new file we can call this one action btn dot tsx we will also be having an interface for this one so let's add an interface of action btn props and right here we'll have an icon of icon type from react icons and then we'll have on click this will be having an event of type react uh, dot mouse event html button element and it will return void okay uh, this one should not be there but here and we return void we'll also have disabled boolean optional like that sfc and we'll say action btn we will receive those props first of all let's pass our interface here action btn props then here we'll have icon which can be icon we'll be having on click we'll be having disabled we will be returning a button um, the text or the content will be our icon so we'll only be having an icon with a size of um, 18 and then right here i close it like that and i save now for this button um, i'll add a class name will flex items will be at the center justify will be center it will be rounded we'll have casa as pointer width will be 40 px height will be 30 px text will be straight 700 we'll be having a border straight 400 we'll add disabled we can say end end we'll have an opacity of 50 casa not allowed so that is the button but uh, we still need to add an on click here on click will be on click and then disabled will be disabled and i save that is our action btn let's make use of it right here so here's where we had action and we had this div here so here for this div we'll have a class name we will flex we justify between then we'll have a gap of four and width will be full right here we will have our action btn let's pass an icon we'll say md cached it expects us to have an on click let's just pass this like that 
and I can duplicate it two more times. For this one, we'll have a different icon, MD delete. So make sure to import it. And for this one, MD remove for view. So let's see how it looks like. And look, we have our actions. We have this, we have this. Awesome, looks much better. Now, when I click on any of these button, you can see it's uh, selecting the checkbox. So what you can do down here. So disable row uh, selection on click that one. Add that property so that when I click on this, it stop checking the checkbox. Awesome. So now we need to add functionality for this toggle, for this delete and a router to take the user to that product. Uh, before our return statement, we will create a new function. So const handle uh, toggle stock. This will be equal to use callback and we invoke it. We pass an arrow function here and also it expects us to have uh, a dependency array. So for this one, we will receive the ID of the product. So the ID will be a string. Also, we will receive in stock. This will be Boolean. And in here, we will make a call, an Axios call. So here we'll say Axios. And then we will use dot put because we want to update some resource in our database. Then we invoke that. We pass the endpoint. It will be at stroke API and then stroke product. That is the first parameter. The second parameter is this object. We'll pass the ID and we'll pass in stock. We will negate in stock because we are doing a toggle. So if it was true, then it will be false now. If it was false, then it will be true. We will tap a dot then method and we will have a response. Uh, we can do a toast, a toast dot success, invoke this and we'll say product status changed. I'll also say router uh, dot refresh. We don't have this router, so let's create it. It's easy. We can say const router will be equal to use router from navigation next navigation and we invoke it let me save to auto format let's come back to our function here we catch the error so here dot catch we invoke that we will have our error there now right here we can toast an error so toast dot error something uh, went wrong we can console dot shock the error and i save for this one, we'll have now handle uh, toggle stock. We will pass the first parameter, which will come from params dot row dot id, and then I, a comma. Then the second parameter is params dot row dot in stock, like that. So I save. Right now it will not work because uh, we don't have this particular API. So let's create it. At app API product we already had this route and for this one we were doing a post request and we want to have one for put request we will add a new function so we will export uh, a sync function we will say put then right here we will have a request of type request and in here we get the current user so we can copy this one also we can make sure that we have this so i'll copy those paste them there then right here we will get whatever is in our body so const body will be equal to await request dot json and we destructure our properties from the body so const id here in stock and we set this to be equal to body now use the id and in stock to update our product uh, state so const product uh, would be equal to await and then here we'll say prisma then dot uh, product then dot update we invoke this and right here we pass where and full colon we say id here is id then we'll have data and we pass in stock then we return the product so i save and there we go so we have that functionality now 
and we hit this endpoint by saying axios dot put from our manage products right here axios dot put api stroke product and we pass the necessary uh, body properties now let's test it so here uh, this is in stock this is out of stock let's toggle this one and product status changed and these updates okay you can also add a loading spinner maybe you can make this to you know uh, load something like that so that we know that the process is in progress but i don't want to waste so much time on it so let's move on to delete so delete will also need to create its own api route and also make a call to that api so here i'll say const handle delete and we'll set this to use callback again we invoke that we pass an arrow function here we also pass a dependency array we will simply receive the id it will be a string and then we will have images of any array we can start by adding a toast uh, deleting product please wait because it might take a while we are deleting resource from two places one firebase storage and the other one uh, from our own database so we will start by deleting the image once it completes we will go on to deleting the product let's have const handle image delete and we set this to an async function and we invoke that and then right here we try and catch so try catch block if we have a catch then we will return console.log of deleting image error and we pass the error here and then right here we'll go through the images so we'll say const item of images we get an item at a time on each image at a time and if the item has the image property uh, let's go ahead and delete that image we get the image reference so const image uh, ref will be equal to ref and this is from firebase storage we pass the storage from firebase storage again we will import it manually okay then here we pass the item dot image this is the url to that image so let's import this image storage actually we won't import it directly we need to say here const storage is equal to get storage now this is what we want from firebase storage and we invoke that so i come back down here here this is not error but error so i save first to auto format this should be an arrow function here so i save now and it's formatted we'll have the id uh, awesome so now we have this delete here and first of all we handle image delete here we get the difference to our firebase uh, image and then we await we call delete uh, object from firebase storage we invoke it and we pass our image ref then here we can also log something console dot log of image deleted just to know we deleted it and right here we pass item dot uh, image okay now after this function right here we await it so we say um, await handle image delete and we invoke it and then we make this to be an async function so here let's add async so that it doesn't throw an error and then now once we delete the images we go ahead and delete the product from our database so right here we'll have axios then dot delete i'll make use of a backtick to create this string and we'll have stroke api then we'll have stroke product then here we'll have stroke and i pass id here so the id will be in our url we will say dot then okay we invoke it uh, actually it will be similar to our dot then here so we'll have a response and a toast so i can copy that and include it here and um, the toast can say product deleted uh, router dot refresh i save to auto format there 
after dot then we can have also uh, dot catch and I invoke that here we will pass the error and we can return something from that and I save so now we have this helper function handle delete that will help us to delete a product we delete images then we delete from our own database so let's make use of this handle delete right here so i'll say handle delete we invoke it we pass params dot row dot id then comma we pass params again dot row dot images i save we don't have the api route for delete this one we don't have this so let's create it inside the app api product so inside the product we will create this part id id part okay and it is dynamic so we add a new folder and just use these square brackets and pass the id there and then inside there we create a new file called route.ts we hit enter so let's delete the product from the mongodb database here and here we just need to export and we'll say async function we say delete um, we invoke it and right here we'll have request of type uh, request uh, we include a comma right here we will also destructure params the params will be of type params which is an object having the id of string and then here we do something we'll have the user so const uh, current user will be equal to we await get current user we invoke it we should check if this user is an admin uh, next response dot error we import it from next server and uh, i save to auto format now down here id will be available in our params id so we can just go ahead and delete this product using the id so you can say const product will be equal to await prisma dot product then dot uh, delete then we pass where here and we will say here id is params dot id just that down here we return um, next response uh, dot json then we pass our product so i go ahead and save pretty nice and look we have an error we should pass our firebase up right here so firebase up so i save now and let's refresh so there we go we have our products and we won't test the functionality of delete so let's open the console as well so that we can catch the errors as they come so let's try to delete tv so i'll click on delete deleting product please wait image deleted awesome uh product deleted and it gets out of our list so the functionality of delete is working well awesome let's finally complete this by working on our eye there so that should be easy we don't have any functions or apis that we are creating it's just a redirect to a different page so we use router.push and we invoke that also we use backticks we'll say that we are going to our product then stroke here and we use this and that and we'll say here uh, params dot row dot id just that i save so right now we might not get the product because our products from the uh, product page are not the same from the database so we haven't put them in sync but let's see what happens if we click it so i click and the url here should change uh, product then this is the product but we get 404 so we'll fix that uh, as we move uh, next let's work on manage orders so for manage orders it will be easy because uh, we will just be copying what we did on our manage products so at our code here 
I'll copy everything at manage products client control a copy then we go to manage orders here then create a new file and we can call it manage orders client dot tsx and I hit enter now from here we can just paste everything and we will change manage products client use control d to select even at the very top uh, control d again to select this one and this one and after all of them you can change this to manage orders and once i come to the very top this is now manage orders client plops manage orders uh, client and so on uh, so we should hook this up to our page we can come to um, manage products page this one and copy everything from here then go to manage orders page and replace here we can change this name here to manage orders and i save so here instead of products we should be getting orders we'll have our orders and we should await get orders from here so get orders and we don't have any category for orders so i remove that one let's import this one so i'll click on that to, to import and remove this one get products from there we get our current user and we check if our current user is there and whether they are admins or not then here we should pass our orders right here so here i'll pass orders and then right here we should have orders so this component doesn't know about the orders prop so we should go to our manage orders client and we should create an orders prop so here we'll have orders and type extended order we don't have it yet so we can create it down here and we'll say type extended order will be equal to our order type from prisma client and here we'll say and we include an object and we'll set user to user so we should also bring this from prisma client and now we have our type like that so here we'll be bringing in our orders so let's have that orders so here we'll have the router we won't have the storage since we are no longer working with images we will still have our rows then here we should create our rows now using our orders and we'll have orders here and we get an order at a time and i can just highlight this use Control d to select these 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 all of these and we'll say order so order doesn't have have some of these properties so we should go one by one changing them here instead of a name we can have the customer instead of saying price we will say amount and the amount will be a format price order dot amount we divide by 100 since we changed this by multiplying by 100 uh, when processing stripe payments now for this one it will be order dot user dot name and here we can have payment status it will be order dot status um we can have a date we can use moment for the date so we'll say moment we import it from moment we invoke this we pass order dot created date and then right here you'll say um dot from now and you invoke that um we can also have the delivery status here so delivery status and we set this to order uh, dot delivery status that's the last one so we remove the image since we don't have images in our order now we come to the columns uh, the first one will be id id 220 second one will be customer here so we remove that we say customer the header name will be customer name so customer 
name we can set the width to one uh, 30 then we come here instead of price we can say amount you can also use price if you want then this can be amount in usd amount then width um, can be 130 render cell here uh, we'll still have font bold text straight 800 then uh, prompts dot row dot amount this can be payment status and this one will be payment space status 130 uh, then after that uh, we won't have the brand so i remove that uh, next we will have delivery status and we can have the header name as uh, delivery uh, status here it will be 130 and we will have this render cell we will have a div then we'll check our params dot row dot delivery status we'll check if the status is pending so if this is pending if it's pending we show this status and we will say the text here is pending uh, the icon we can say md access time then a uh, field like that the bg will be a uh, straight 200 color will be text straight 700 um we come down here else we check the delivery status again here so we will copy this one copy we paste it there then we include another uh, question mark there if this one is dispatched then we will show a status like this one we will say dispatched then here we will have md delivery dining then this one will be purple and this one will be purple so i select both and i say purple after this before we have the curly brackets we include a full colon we can perform another check if the delivery status is delivered so here we say if this is now delivered we include a question mark we will show this something like this so i paste there else at the end here full colon we can show null or have empty fragments like that so this one is for the case when it's derived so we say the reward then this one will be md done the colors will be green showing success so green so i save and uh, this is for delivery status for payment status we should also have some render cells or rather we can just duplicate this section let's duplicate it use alt shift top arrow then we remove this one uh, let's copy the payment status here copy there and we paste here you copy here and you paste here um, let's copy this one again because we will use it here so i use ctrl d to remove those three delivery status and paste okay now remove this field and let's customize this one further um, the first one we will check whether the payment status is pending then we will show this that is okay the next one will check if the payment status is marked as complete if it's so then we will say here completed we will have a different icon md done we won't have this one here from this full colon to this full colon i'll remove that part okay actually i should include a full colon there so i save we have this if none of these matches one should be there at least though okay so just a look up we have id customer amount payment status we have now our delivery status uh, which has this render cell and then action 
so before we go to action we should be having a date here and after that we have now the action the styling is the same here then we'll have this action btn the icon will be md uh, delivery dining so this will be for marking an order as dispatched then here we'll have handle dispatch we'll just pass the row id so i remove this part we'll have one for md done for marking an order as delivered so md done this will be handle deliver then we also pass the id so i remove that section right there then here we have the last one which will have the i and it will take us to stroke order uh, stroke that one now let's create these two functions we will remove handle delete so we remove the entire of this part handle delete then for this one we can call it handle dispatch we will have use callback which will receive just the id so we remove this in stock we'll call axios then we'll put it api stroke order then we'll have the id and we will mark here delivery status we will mark it as dispatched then here we toast order dispatched so this is it for uh, handling the dispatch for deliver it will be similar so we just copy this function and down here we can just paste it so handle deliver we will receive the id we hit this api endpoint then we will mark the order as delivered then here order delivered for something that went wrong cool so we move on down here to this table here we'll just say manage orders we'll have our data grid rows uh, i think everything else will be the same and i save that file so we have created our table and we can check it out and see if it works so let's remove some of these unused imports just like that i save okay we have more here let's just remove them and save okay so let's see look we already have this but for completed here it should not be this color so that is one thing um we don't have the delivery status showing here so let's check them out we check if uh, the payment status is complete we use now here uh, a green color instead of purple so that is the only fix for that so Control d and i say uh, green i save so it changes to green and that's good now so we should be seeing the delivery status we see none so we must have made a mess now uh, maybe our rows change this to delivery status here save that should fix it uh, let's see and there we go so they are pending awesome let's work on this action button so that we see if these will change so we actually worked on them and included the functions the only thing that we are missing is this api uh, endpoint so we should create that uh, you can minimize everything go to app then api here we had product and we created an endpoint to update our product so let's copy whatever is in our product copy all of that then inside the api here we'll create a new folder and we'll call it order inside the order we create a new file and we can call it route.ts uh, we paste whatever we have in our products we don't need to post so i remove this post function okay then here current user we await the current user if we have an issue with the user we return the error then here the body we will get only the id and the uh, delivery status so here we get the delivery uh, status 
from the body then here we will have the product so control d for all three product there and replace with order so we await prisma order dot update where id is id and we change the uh, data here we will only pass the delivery status so we pass the delivery status and that's it that's it so i save now we have our api endpoint uh, or rather we are hitting that api endpoint and we can see if it works so here we mark an order as dispatched by clicking this one and order dispatched and the state changed to dispatched here we click on this one order dispatched although the payment is pending uh, then you can click on this one order delivered and for order delivered we see nothing meaning that we have an issue so we come back here let me copy this one I think this pairing is wrong is it yes I save so that's the only issue and it should show here as delivered um so it's still not showing because we already have the previous wrong data saved so let's click it again and it should mark it as delivered and we should see it now yeah there we go uh -huh. That is awesome. Now, this eye, I think it takes us to the order details. When I click on it, that page does not exist. So we should be working on that particular page next. Uh, so now let's just create that order page. For now, I'll cross everything there. And we can go to app. Um, then from app, we'll create a new folder for our single order. So here we'll say order. And for this order, we will create another folder that will have the square brackets. And here we will be passing the order ID. So we'll be using this ID to get a single order. And this ID will be uh, gotten from our URL. So inside this order ID, I'll create a new file and I can call it page.tsx status functional component uh, actually i think i'll take the one that we have at our page here let's copy everything then inside here we will paste and we can just change the name of the component to order so we have a lot of product there what should we do go one by one or change all of them i'll just change all of them to order but some should be capital like this should be a component so we should be having order details then that should be coming from here order details from order details uh, what else should be capital this one this here uh, this here um, we don't have this so let's remove that one we won't do this so let's remove this one let's remove the params ah let's create this order details component so here i'll add a new file called order details dot tsx status functional component and i'll say order details we return empty fragments and then we should be able to get our order somehow we will use uh, our actions folder right here create a new file and we'll call this one get order by id we will import uh, prisma uh, from at uh, stroke ribs stroke prisma db we will create an interface i params and here we will create an order id which will be optional and we'll have it as a string we create export uh, default we'll say async function uh, we call it get order 
by id we invoke it and we'll have it as this we pass our params and they'll be of type i params we get the id from these params in here first of all we should have a try and catch block so i click on that one and down here if we have an error we will draw it now in our try we can be able to get the id from our params so we can say const we'll say order id will be equal to params once we have the order id we can be able now to get the order using it so here we'll say const order will be equal to and we await prisma dot order uh, dot find unique we pass an object and we'll say where full colon we pass an object id is order id once we do that we will have our order so let's check if we have the order if no order we return null else we return the order now we have our function there that will help us to get the order from our database so we save we come back to page and now we can use that function here to get the order so here we'll have our const order will be equal to we await and we get order by id we invoke that and we pass our params since we use await here this should be an async call so we use async here what else we remove this list rating uh, actually we don't need this entire section now in our order details we just need to say that we are receiving the order and this error will clear up so order details here we'll be receiving the order and we should create an interface uh, this will be a client component so use client we create an interface we make use of the interface here so react dot fc angle brackets and we pass our order details props we'll have a router so const router which will be equal to use router and we invoke it we return here uh, a div so let me show you what we are actually working on so that you can have a clear idea before we proceed and look this is what we want to create order details the order id total amount the status uh, the products that were ordered who ordered them you can add as many details as you want right here so for now i'll just be adding on with this let's start by adding a class name and we'll say max hyphen width will be uh, 11 50 px and then here i'll have m as auto flex then flex uh, is column then we'll have a gap of two we'll be having a heading so i'll add a div and in here i'll add a new component of our heading like that it will be a self-closing one but we'll add title here as order details here we'll have a simple class name and we'll set margin to the top of eight and i save to auto format there then let's come here and i'll add a div and we'll have the order um, id full colon and here we'll pass the order dot id then here we'll have another div we can have the total uh, amount uh, full colon and here i'll use a span to display the amount like that and we will use the format price util function so uh, format price down here from our utils i invoke that and we pass our order dot amount so the reason we added this is so that you can add a class name to this one and we will just say font is bold i save to auto format and after that div we show the various payment status i'll have a div 
uh, I'll have another div. It will say payment status, uh, full colon. Then down here, we will show the payment status depending on the status. So we'll have a div and we'll perform a check. So here we'll say order dot status. We'll say is this equal to pending? If this is true, then we'll show the status component right here. We will be having several props. This is for the case when it's pending. Then you can do this. Then you'll say order dot status is equals is equals is equals to complete. Then we come right here and we'll have it again. After complete, we use a question mark and after our status here, we use a full colon and let's have the empty fragments. I saved out of format and for the second one, we should change now these two. If it's complete, we change this to completed, completed. Then this will be MD done. Then this will be green. MD done, we should import it from React icons. Okay, uh, this order is complaining still. And I think this is because sometimes the order can be null. So yeah, before we pass it, we should be able to return an error here. So here it will say if we don't have an order, then we will be turning something here. So I save. So the error disappears. You can include a better error message there. Back to order details. We'll say class name. We will flex. We'll have a gap of two. We'll have items to the center. Uh, the next one is actually delivery status, which will be so similar to this payment status. We can highlight the entire of this div. Where should it end? Uh, this one here up to this point. You should have to closing div at the bottom there. Then you duplicate it alt shift bottom arrow. Then here the same styles here. The name will change to delivery status. Then here we'll check order dot delivery status. So control D. I'll remove those two and I'll say dot delivery status. If pending, then it will be this one. If dispatched, it will be dispatched. Then here we will use MD uh, delivery dining. Then we use purple. We can perform another check for uh, completed. I can copy this part here from here to here. Uh, copy and right here you paste and I save to auto format. So here we will check for delivered. And here we'll now have delivered MD done. Make sure to import that. Then this green. Like that, I save. So actually right now we should be having something. So if we come back to the site, Go to what we are working on, click on one of these, like this one. Oops, we get nothing. For this one, it should be outside the admin. So let's go to app admin, manage orders here. Let's check that click button. So I just included a forward slash right here. And uh, when I do that, uh, it takes us to this page, but we have this other error here saying next router was not mounted. So what I can do at our order details, this one. Okay, let me try to remove it first and see if it will work. So let's refresh and we get our order details. So you can see, but I still want to test it from our admin. So let's go back to admin where we had manage orders. And then I click on one of the orders and see 
yeah there we go so you can just remove this right here if you are not using it okay so just remove and i save and right now you can see we have our order details being listed so after our delivery status div here you should have another div and you can say the date full colon and here we will have a moment we invoke that we should pass our order dot created date and at the end here we say dot from now and we invoke that as well so make sure to import this moment at the top okay there we go so that's it for the date now the next thing is to display a list of products that were ordered so here we can have a h2 and uh, we can say uh, products ordered okay and right here we can have a class name so class name and we'll have font as semi mm, bold then we'll have margin to the top of four and also margin to the bottom of two right here we'll have a div and we can add some class names for it so class name uh, will show grid will show a uh, grid uh, hyphen calls uh, hyphen five this will be like a similar style that we had for our shopping cart so text here will be small extra small that is a uh, gap will be four then we'll have padding to the bottom of two then items will be at the center okay then in here um we'll have the heading uh, all the column for the heading so i'll say div and we'll say products or a product we'll have a class name we'll say call a hyphen span of two then we'll justify self uh, to the start you duplicate like uh, four times then just remove the call span for the other three so control d remove that and then here this is the first one the second one here will be uh, price and here it will be justify self center this this and this will be center so here center this one two is center and for this one we'll be having it as q t y or quantity then right here this will be end and it will be the total amount so i save and we should be having that in a grid right here and there we go we have product order then we have product here price quantity total then we show the products below so we should be mapping through the products so after this particular div will come right here order dot products we'll say end end we'll have order dot products dot map we invoke this we'll have an item at a time and right here we will be able to return something so for now i'll pass these empty react fragments but we should be able to create an order item component so right here let's add a new file and right here we'll say order item uh, dot tsx here it says the trace functional component and you'll say order item I save and let's come back to order details and we pass this order item right here so order item and uh, for this one it will be having a key the key will be item id we should be able to pass the individual item as a plop so i'll pass the individual item as a plop to our order item let's import this order item and it's imported but this has an error because our other item component doesn't know about the item let's create an interface for that 
item here we make sure that we pass our react dot fc then order item props here now we destructure the item and you can see the error from this file disappeared now we can use this item to show it on the ui so here we will return a div this div will have a class name and the class name here will be grid so grid uh, hyphen calls hyphen five then text will be extra small xs um, then md full colon text will be uh, sm gap will be four then border um, to the top will be 1.5 uh, uh, px okay border here will be straight uh, 200 then padding along the y-axis will be 4 and items will be at the center uh, now down here we'll list the different properties for this div it will have the image so in here we'll have another div and it will have the image we get this image from next it will be self closing for this image we'll have the src the item dot uh, selected image dot image we will also have an alt which will be now be equal to item dot name we will fill and also we'll have a class name of object contain then here we'll have a class name for this image container and we will say relative we will also say width is hyphen uh, 70 px so this is a custom make sure to include it inside the square brackets and then right here we'll have aspect ratio aspect ratio of square then here we'll have a call span so let's add a class name first then we'll say call hyphen span of two meaning that it will take two columns then we'll justify uh, self to the start then flex gap will be two then this should be having a space there md gap will be four so i save and for now we should be able to see the image there we go we have the image there then we'll have another div this is where we'll show the name so we'll have the div for the name and we will use the truncate uh, helper function that we created at our utils folder to truncate the text and we'll pass item dot name right here now the next thing down here we'll have the item uh, selected color so here we'll have the div uh, we'll have the item dot uh, selected image dot color let's style both of those so we add a class name and we will flex them then we'll say flex will be in a column and finally we'll have a gap of one between them i save and we should be seeing those two uh, right here and there we go we add the price now after this div now after the enter of this div then you'll add another div and right here we will format the price yeah now we should be having a class name we'll justify hyphen self to the center you can use alt shift bottom arrow and then here we pass the item quantity so instead of formatting the price i'll say item dot quantity uh, one last one and we are done with this particular component that's the total amount so here we'll set this to the very end so justify here end and then we'll also have font is semi uh, bold and right here we will take the quantity then we multiply with the price so we get the total and these two include them in normal brackets so here 
that one and this one so that at the end here i can say dot two fixed uh we invoke that and we pass to there then at the front here you can include the money sign and i save that will be the total so let's see for each of the item and look one of them we multiply by one we get this and that is how you can list the products for each of the of those so i can go back you can click on uh, this one to see the items that were there and you can see it's this one so if i'm a normal user i should be able to see my own orders the things that i have ordered uh, like this and then i can be able to view the details for each of them uh, easily so this will be easy because we already have a data table for our orders we just need to customize it and remove some actions everything else i think will remain the same so at the root of our app we'll create a new folder and we'll call it orders we should have a page dot tsx file and i'll create another one called order uh, client dot tsx so let's go to admin here manage orders page let's copy everything from here so control a copy we paste we can just say orders instead of manage orders control d and i'll say orders so we should be able to get the orders by user id so i will remove this one then we will get the current user and the only thing that we will check if if we have a user so remove the admin part and then for the orders let's uh, create a function at right here we create and we'll say uh, get orders uh, by user id dot ts i'll come to get orders and i'll copy everything from this one then come to this one and paste it here so from here we'll export get orders uh, by uh, user id right here we'll be able to receive the user id and we will have the string there and then here we will try and catch so we'll get orders we await prisma dot find many and here you can include the user and also you can have order by that and you can have a filter right here now so we'll say where full colon user id is user uh, id just that and then you'll get the orders for that specific user so i'll cancel that now i'll come back to the page here and after we check if we have the user that is when we will be able to get our orders const orders uh, will be equal to we await and we will get orders by user id it's imported here so remove the other one there and we invoke this and we just need to pass the current user dot id then down here you can check if you have the order or not so because it can be null so here you can say if we don't have the order the orders then uh, come right here and say no orders yet something like that we will receive those orders on the client here and then we'll use those orders to create the table so let's just copy the table from our mm -hmm, app at the top there app manage orders client copy everything from there come back right here and paste scroll to the top let's change the name remove this manage so control d remove that and save we can have it as orders client or order client <laughs> here we included orders client okay uh what is this from order client the name of the file we included as just order client so save that come back and now we already have that table at our here we come here 
our own orders here we are so we have this for a user but the user should not be able to perform these actions they should not mark their own orders as dispatched or less these and i think we we missed some uh some other presses the same way and then we check if the user is an admin so this should be returned so that this error clears uh, yeah like that so just copy this logic right there save that file and you can as well update other routes that we worked on so back to api here uh, you can check the route for product there we had this where we were creating a product make sure you update that because if we have a user they will be able to create a product even though they are not admins you can do the same for the rest so i'll just show you that this three here wait i removed even the user just this portion there so you can do these updates uh, sorry for all this but for only the admin routes so that should be the product route here and here and then the order route and did we work on this the same way this is automatic uh, actually only those yeah that's good that's good so now let's cross those routes so for the order just go to actions remove the handle dispatch and handle delivered ui remove those also remove these functions because we no longer need them here remove handle deliver also remove handle dispatch save and that should be it for our own orders and uh, yeah it's a shorter table you can decrease its width if you want but i'll leave it at that so yeah so far so good we can see our own orders we are able to see the order details if i click on that uh taking time to load there we go if i come here and go to dashboard we are able to manage the orders we are able to manage the products we are able to add a product so this is a very huge progress and uh, we are actually almost done with our application so what remains is working on our summary then we will work on our categories so that we are able to select the various categories of products uh, then we will work on the search right here and finally we will work on product reviews so we still have a bit of a journey to go but we will get there uh, this was a very huge course but uh, before we even get to summary there is one important thing that we are not doing we are not getting our products for our e-commerce web app from the database uh, this was the dummy data that we used which is static so i would like to get the products from the database now that we are able to add a product in the database so let's just uh, dive right in minimize everything then you will open up then you'll go to the page at the root of our app and this is the beginning of our application here and here you'll see here we were bringing in products from our utils we no longer want this we want to get the products from our database and if we check at our actions you'll see we already created this particular function for getting the products which also filters them depending on the search string and the query string at the page we will call this particular function and we need to make this to be an async function so we'll say export default async function async keyword will be here and then in here we will now say const uh, products will be equal to we await get products we invoke that let's create an interface for our search params or home props so let's destructure those props right here and we'll say here it's such uh, params i missed the spelling here i think there is an a there we can use full colon here 
and say this will be of type home props. Then right here, we'll pass our search params. We should auto import it. Uh, another thing is that I don't want them to always show in the same order. I want them to be random, especially at the home page. So we will create a small algorithm that will randomize uh, those particular products. So here, first of all, I perform a check. So if our products uh, dot length uh, is, equals, is equals to zero. So if we don't have any products, then we will go ahead here and return our null data component. And let's import this component so that it stops complaining. Okay, now right here, let's create our algorithm. So what this will be doing is to uh, shuffle our products before displaying them every time we refresh the page so that user is not bored by seeing the same product on our UI. So what we are doing here is a swap. So product, which is at position uh, I, we are setting it to be at position J. And that product, which is at position J, we are setting it to be at position i so product at position i we set it to product at position j product at position j we set it to product at position i so we shuffle them okay and then at the end of this we will return our array so here let's uh, get our shuffled products so we'll say const uh, shuffled products will be equal to we call our shuffle array and we invoke that and we pass our products. This is what we will pass as our products right here. Instead of mapping through the products, we map through our uh, shuffled products. And then we save. So right now, if we visit our app, we should be having at least one product. And there we go. We have this one product from our database. As you can see, it doesn't even have a lot of details. So if I click it, Okay, it takes us here. We have an error. We don't have one where we are getting a product by ID. So we will add it so that we can be able to get product from our, our database using the ID. So here, let's add a new file and we'll say get product by ID dot ts. So right here, we will bring in Prisma. So import Prisma. And this will come from at stroke libs stroke prisma db. Let's create an interface and we'll say i uh, params. Here we'll be having the product id, which will be of type string. And this can be optional. We'll say export and we'll say default uh, async uh, function get product uh, by id will be the name of our function and uh, we invoke this here we will receive uh, params of type i params uh, which we have defined at the top there let's have a try and catch block so try and catch the error here will be of type any so inside our try we will get our product id from the params so we will say const uh, product ID will be equal to params. So we destructure it out of params. Then we use that to get the product. Okay. Then here we say that we want to include the reviews for this product. So we'll say include right here. We'll say we include reviews, pass an object. And for the reviews, we will include the user so we'll set user uh, to true like that then right here uh, comma we order by and we'll say created date to be descending so desk i save and that is how we can get the product once we get the product let's come down here and we perform a check do we have this product so if we don't have a product we'll go ahead right here and we will return null and i save awesome we'll use this function inside our product so 
go to product folder then product id page so remove this we will make this to be an async function so async i will remove that params and right here we will now say const uh, product uh, will be equal to we await and we will get product by id we invoke it and we pass our params i save so let's see if we get the product so it's refreshing okay still we have an issue at our product details we'll check if we don't have the product we will not return the bureau code so we will return the null data uh, component so return here i save what is that error so here we get oops product with the given id does not exist so it's like we are not getting the product we will return our, our product now i save and let's refresh the page and see if that error has gone uh, amazingly we have our product there awesome and we are able to even switch the colors which is really cool we are able to add it to cut view cut uh, here is our cut it also has some previous product from the local storage so we can just clear everything and this is what we have now let us add a nav bar here for the categories open up then components right here we will go to nav and inside the nav add a new file we will call this one categories.tsx we call the component our categories these categories we will hook it at our nav bar after this div right here we will pass our categories component and we save there we go we have these categories here and we will return a div here with a class name of uh, bg white and then in here we'll have a container so we will use our container component from container inside our container we'll have another div we will have a class name for this class name padding to the top will be four it will be flex we will flex row items will be at the center and justify will be between then right here we will have an overflow x of outer and in here we will be able to map through our different categories and these categories are available at our utils so import them from the utils and we'll say uh, dot map we invoke this we pass an function here we will get a category at a time we can call it an item and in here we will be able to uh, return basically we can use normal brackets here and remove the curly bracket so it will return directly like this and right here we will be able to pass another component so let's pass a div for now we have turned a div for now but we will return another component let's create it here and we will call this component category so category one category dot tsx and here status functional component and we will be able to call this one category let's define some props so we will have an interface and we will call it category props we will have a label which will be a string right here we'll have an icon which will be an icon okay it should be icon type from react icons then we'll have selected which will be optional this one and it will be boolean so this will this one will tell us which category is selected basically then let's pass that right here this will be react dot fc and right here we will be able to destructure the different categories the label we will able to get the icon from uh, icon then here we will be able to get selected okay all of them has issues why didn't we complete here and there we go we will have this div and it will have a class name 
Some of the class names here will be dynamic, use square brackets and backticks. Then you'll say flex, items will be center. So here you'll say icon and these will have a size prop of 20. And then we can self close it like that. So here we'll have a div. The div will only show the label. So font for this one will be medium. Text here will be small. Now let's come here. So we style these two. We flex them and we align them to the center. Then we justify it to the center as well. Text center, gap of one, padding of two, border, okay, border bottom of two. And we'll have hover full colon to be text. Okay, when we hover, we'll have text uh, to change color to slate 800 and we will add transition here cursor will be pointer so i can hit enter and right here we'll have some dynamic style so we will check if this particular category is selected so we'll say selected and if this is selected then we'll have these styles here we'll have a border b of straight 800 we will change the text color so text will be straight 800 as well for the case when it's not selected we will have border as transparent text uh, will be straight uh, hyphen 500 will do so at the top here we will create a function that will handle the click for this particular category so that we can uh, change the url uh, change the query params and refetch the products so that we get new products uh, depending on the category that we have clicked so right here we will be having an on click event we will have handle click so right here we will say const handle click uh, will be equal to we call use callback hook we invoke it we pass an arrow function in here and it expects us to have a dependency array and then at the top here get our router so const router and we'll set this to be equal to use router and we invoke that one then at the end here we will get our params so we'll say const params and we have a hook called use search params so use uh, search params and we also invoke that one and now in here we will write our logic for when we click a certain category so first of all we check if they clicked on all so here we'll say if the label is equals to all then we will go ahead and push them to the home page we clear our url so here we will say uh, router dot push and we clear our url by pushing them to the home like that without any thing else in our url and then right here we'll say else if they click something else apart from all then we will update our query so right here we'll say let current query be equal to just uh, an empty object and then right here we'll say if we have uh, the params we will update our current query here uh, to be equal to and we will create a, a query string um using a library called query string so qs this will be an object from a library called query string uh, dot pass and right here we will pass our params uh, dot to string we invoke that so we don't have this qs and right here it'll say npm i and we'll say query hyphen string we install that package okay i messed up uh this is query so npm i query string install that one and then now right here let's see if it will auto import and we get this click on that one so it will be import query string from query string you can use the full name or you can use qs for query string after this if statement down here we will say const updated query will be equal to 
it will be an object this will be of type any we will spread our query and we will add our label so we will set our category here uh, to be label so i can use a small cup so what we have simply done we have taken the existing uh, query and we have added our own so we update this object from our param so this is the existing uh, query string we update it with the new one which we click like this so now right here we construct our url now const url will be equal to we will make use of the query string which we have just installed dot stringify url like that we invoke this one in here we will pass the first object the base url here is home and then we will add the query now so we take the default url then we add the different queries that are now there i'll add another object we'll say skip null and we'll set this one to true now after we construct our url using the queries we will come right here and we will take the user to that particular new url so router dot push and we take them to the url this one which we have constructed from the query awesome and this should be it actually so here let's just pass the different dependencies when the label change we should be able to call this function again when params change we should be able to call this function again and when router changes i save so this is now our category component so we just need to display this on our nav so here once we map through the different categories i can remove that one and we will show the category component now uh, close it and we pass the various props we will check our category from the params so category and if this category will be equal to item dot label then that uh, category will be marked as active so we don't have this we should be getting it from the params so at the top here we will say const params will be equal to use uh, such params and we get to invoke that and then right here we will say that our category uh, will be equal to params this can be there or not dot get then we will get our category so we get the category from the params or from the url if that category is equal to the current item dot label then we will mark that particular category on our categories as active okay and then right here if it's at our home uh, that means that we won't be having the category therefore we should mark all as the active uh, category so here we will say or pass these uh, brackets and we'll say if category is equal to null then here we'll say end end item dot label uh, is equal to all so if we don't have a category and item dot label is all then we will mark selected as true and then at the top here we will check if we are at the main page so we'll say const path name and we can get path name from a hook called use path name and we invoke that and then right here const is main page will be equal to path name is equals is equals to home so if we are not on main page so is main page here uh, we'll go ahead and return null so we won't show the categories if we are not at the home page okay we have a server component that imports next router instead of next router we will say next uh, stroke navigation i save okay another issue we used a hook and we didn't mark that component as a client component use client and we should do the same for this one so save this file and come to this so i save okay let's see now if we still have another issue refresh okay now we are able to load awesome and look we have listed our different categories like that let's click on phone and see if we still get the phone and there we go 
this is highlighted and you can see now here we constructed our url and we added category is equals to phone click on laptop we get nothing so oops no products click all to clear filter let's click on all and the filter is cleared there so once we add other products with desktop or watch they'll be fetched depending on that category since we know phone works then that means the rest will also work okay cool now the next thing that we will do is to complete our product okay so if i click on product we should be able to add a rating and show the rating right here so let's work on that next and then after completing that we will work on our search bar and finally we will come to the dashboard and complete our summary and then we will be done with the course after deploying it okay and for adding a rating we will need an api route okay and also we will need the prisma model for a review so if we check our prisma schema and we scroll here did we add a review somewhere we did this one so we already did this and now all we need to do is to make use of it uh, to create a review for a certain product okay so minimize everything then you'll go to app api and right here you can add a new folder and you will call it rating inside there you can add a new route called route.ts now in here we will create our function we can start by creating our function down here and we'll say export async function this will be a post request you invoke this we will have a request of type quest here we will start by getting our current user so our const current user will be equal to we await get current user we auto import it from our actions and we invoke it here we will check if we have the user so if we don't have the user then here we will throw an error down here we get whatever will be at our body so const body first of all will be equal to await request dot json then we destructure now a user should not be able to add uh, a rating if they have they don't have the order or the that particular product delivered we'll check if the order is delivered we use our current user dot orders dot sum so here you'll see that property orders does not exist so what we can do is to go to get current user get current user and here we filtered with the email and we will make the user to also come with the orders included so here i'll say include and we will invoke this and we'll say orders and we'll set that to true so include full colon so we include even the orders when we are getting the user and then from here we can get the orders from the user and then we perform some filtering using the sum array method to get the derived orders only um, one thing is that when a person has an order they might have many products ordered at the same time okay i will get the order products so order dot uh, products right here i'll say dot find we invoke this now so we have a loop inside a loop it's not good for performance but it will work for now so here we will have an item and right here we will have an item dot id and we'll check if this is equal to our product uh, dot id and this particular product id is the one that we are trying to rate so we check if that particular product is available on these um orders okay and also here we make sure that this particular order is delivered so here we'll say end and order dot delivery status is equals is equals to delivered okay i hope that makes sense okay now another thing is that we will check if this particular user has already rated this product so they can't rate a product twice so if this is true that means that this user has already rated this particular product so 
right here we'll perform a check so if user review so if they have already reviewed this particular product or if this particular product is not delivered then we should draw an error here we will return and we'll return next uh, response dot error and we invoke if they try to review then they'll get an error now right here let's go ahead and create this review so const review will be equal to await we say prisma dot review then we say dot create we invoke this and we pass our review data so data will be a comment we will have rating we will have a product id and this will be product dot id so product dot id and finally here we'll have the user id so once we create that review we will return the review to the user so right here we will say return next response uh, dot json and we pass our review okay this should work but uh, you can also wrap it in a try and catch block so now let's go back to our product and try to make use of this particular api route so minimize everything go up then we have this product then we should add a new one and we will call this one uh, add rating something like that add rating dot tsx we will have an interface we will say add rating props we should be getting the product as a prop so we say this is of type product and here we will say end we add the review here we will say reviews and we say this will be an array also we have the type for the review which is awesome all these are now coming from prisma uh, we will include this and we will say save user and we will pass an object we will say orders uh, full colon of type order this will come from prisma client and this can also be null so we say null let's create this component sfc and we will say add a rating like that then we come here we will have the different uh, props we'll have product we'll have user let's make sure that we pass our interface so react dot uh, fc and here we will pass our add rating props okay we should not have this let's remove that now right here we will have a div i'll save for now i'll come right here to the page now here we will have our add rating component and it expects us to pass the product so we'll say that product is product and also it wants us to pass the user so we'll say user is user we don't have the user but we can get the user from our actions so here we'll say const user will be equal to we await get current user like that and we invoke that one and we pass everything now so i save and now all we should do is to work on this add rating component so let's start with before our return statement uh, right here we'll have const uh, is loading so we create a state here and set is loading and this will be equal to use a state and we invoke it we pass false not user state but use state let's make sure we import that from react we will have a router so const router will be equal to use router from next navigation and we invoke that we will make use of a react hook form so here we'll say const we will destructure some stuff we have done this before and this will be coming from use form and use form is coming from react hook form we will be invoking this we will be passing some default values there and this use form will be having a type 
and that will be the field values so you pass field values right here now right here when you recall register you'll get some cool suggestions like under submit we will have set value uh, we will have a reset then we will have a form state for this form state we will destructure errors from it so errors then right here we can have default values full colon and here we will have the comment and the rating so by default comment here will be an empty string let it start with a small and then the rating will be zero or rather it should be one okay you can't have a zero rating the rest should be one maximum should be five i don't know this is just <laughs> the default anyway now down here so set custom value and we will make use of the set value function here this function will have an id of type string value of type any and right here set value will pass id and we will pass value and then we will pass right here an object should touch uh, to be true should dirty true should validate to be true here we will say const on submit of type submit handra from react hook form here we will have field values we will get data here and this will be an async function now let's work on our ui then we will come back here and make the api request we should be having a class name we will flex and we will flex column and then we'll have a gap of two max uh, width will be 500 px we will be having a heading component the title will be read this product here let's import this heading from components we will show a rating component right here let's use control space it should come from uh, material ui so this has an on change event we will pass an arrow function right here this will receive the event and the new value and then we can use those right here to set our new rating so set custom value and we invoke this here we will say rating and this rating will be our new value so right now if we save we should be having this particular uh, component there so we should mark this component as a client component so use client so i click on the product and look we have this here which we can click on and it will change the rating depending on where we have clicked so we should have an input field for adding a comment so below the rating here we will say input it will expect us to have several uh, stuff okay we will have a button to submit the rating we will also have an on click event handle submit we will invoke this and we will pass our on submit let's import this from our app components and save now if we check we have this you have that awesome so if i inspect we type something let's go to console and if we submit we should be seeing something now look we have comment as this rating as this if we update to hello we update here rate rating is for hello it's working awesome so that console log is the one that we have here at our on submit so all we should do here is to make a http request we save that information in the database so here we will set is routing to true uh, if the rating is zero so you can't rate zero we will return immediately so we won't save this information in the db so toast dot error 
and here we will import the toast awesome const rating data to be equal to we destructure here our data but also we will be adding the user id to this particular data so the person who is rating this particular product will be user id and also we will be passing our product to this particular data so product will be our product we will now make our axios request we will say axios uh, dot post we pass our api endpoint which will be at api and we'll say rating and we pass our rating data we will be able to tap to the dot then method here and we invoke this we pass another function and we can do something in here like toast a success message also here we can refresh our router and we can call reset so reset we reset our values from the form uh, actually today i think the code is not auto formatting uh, i had disabled prettier for some reason so that's why it's longer than normal but uh, i hope um, you are able to follow along now right here we will catch so if there is an error we should be able to do something with it we'll say finally and for finally we will set is routing to false once we get here and i save now right here if we don't have a user or if no product we will return null to show this particular component we should also be making a check like we did right here we check if it's delivered and if we have a user review and based on that we decide whether to show the component or not now here instead of current user we will say user so you can copy that logic and then now right here okay if we already have a user review and if we don't have the product is delivered or the order is delivered then we will not show the ui for adding uh, a review so we return null so right now i believe we should see null because we don't have this product as delivered or something like that so we should comment it out first so that we test and then we will return it later and test again if we need to let's refresh so once we refresh and try to call rating product here then comment should be having something so we say uh, good product then we rate again no rating selected we must select something here good product we give it a four and uh, we should mark these status at fall so that we no longer road if we get to this point let's use curly brackets here so that we can enter in a new line here and we return the state here as false so we save i refresh again okay so let's give it a four and we say good product and i read now loading something went wrong on our route here these will prevent us from rating the product so let's let's rate it without these first so that we see if it will work out also remove this one so let's save and come back we select a four and the message and we call rate product so it's loading and there we go rating submitted once it's submitted we should be able to see it at the bottom here and there we go look good product awesome so it's working well also this this did not clear but once we already read the product the entire of this ui will hide will be hidden so right now if we return this and this So now i will return that and i'll save okay let's see so you see that section is hidden and we have this one review there uh, good product so if we don't have a review let's not show this heading let's go to restarting uh, in here before the return statement let's check if we have the product reviews we will return our so i save and 
this should not show you see now we don't have that annoying heading without the data so let's uh, order this particular watch so i'll click on silver there two of them add to cart view cart we are at cart we go to checkout um i don't have my webhook started therefore this will not mark the order is paid but we can still pay it using stripe and it will create the order actually it has already created the order only that it's still pending uh, the status for the paid it's pending okay but it will work for testing the general stuff so let's just pay now it's processing and it's paid but remember it will not mark our order is paid so if i view my orders here okay we get 404 we worked on this page didn't we why did we get 404 okay stroke orders it will be stroke orders here it's orders so orders so uh, i save that file basically it should have taken us to orders not order so we have updated that next time it should work and you'll see at our orders now we have this one three minutes ago and it's pending everything is pending although we paid uh, my webhook is not on therefore payment status was not marked as complete okay uh, if i come to the dashboard and if we go to manage orders so right now we should not be able to rate that product because it's not delivered so first of all let me check if we are able to or not so right now we are not able to rate it so here uh, let's mark it as delivered here even though it's not paid yet order delivered and there we go it took some time to update i don't know why once it's delivered look our ui updated and we are able to rate this product let's give it a five and we can say amazing watch and i rate the product it's loading rating submitted and look we hide the ui and now we have these product is rated here a few seconds ago amazing watch so our functionality is working and our app we can consider it actually as complete because the only thing that remains is this search bar and our summary so let's work on that next so the search bar will be easy uh, right here i can close all the tabs you need to go to app you'll go to components right here we will add a new component we can call it search bar status functional component and these will be search bar let's take this component into our nav bar so here instead of search we will have search bar this one let's click it so that we also auto import it just like that so i'll save and let's just expand here go to search right here we'll just say use client we can actually start with the ui here we will be having a div this div will have a class name let's flex and then say items to the center now inside this div we'll be having an input field and a button let's add class name so we'll have class name will have padding of two border then the color of the border will be gray 300 it will be rounded but on the left and here we will say md we can say on focus let's outrain none on focus we will have a border of size 0 0.5 px also here on focus again we will have the border color to be straight 500 and width will be 80 those are the class name for the input so here we will have press holder and we can say explore e shop type will be text and then we will remove autocomplete and we'll set this to off so that is basically the input 
Now for the button, red save, and we should be having a nice UI already. So right here, look, now this should be rounded to the right only, so that it looks nice. Right there. So it's rounded on this end, but this end it's not. Now we have a nice search bar, just like that. But it's not functional, so let's make it functional. So let's use React hook form. We will destructure some stuff from use form, which comes from React hook form. Invoke that. We should pass field values. Let's make sure to import this one from React hook form. We will have the default values. We will have uh, a search term and it will be an empty string. From this use form, we will be able to get several stuff here. We will be able to get register, um, handle, submit. We will be able to get the reset. Also, we will be able to get the form state. And from form state, we will have our errors. We will register this input field here. We will spread register and then we invoke it and we will pass such term. Now let's create a function that will help us to submit the form. Uh, on submit, okay, this will be an async function which will receive data, add the type here like that and we have our data there for now let's just say console.rog of data at the button we will have an on click event and we will say handle submit we invoke this one and we'll pass on submit so once we click we'll be able to log the inputs for that on the console let's open the console and now uh, we can say nothing and we get the search term right there what we will do we'll just update our url or the param and then it will fetch the data again um, using different query we need to make use of our router and we can bring it here so const router will be equal to use router and we bring it from next navigation so we invoke that we will perform a check to first make sure that we have a search term so we'll say if there is no data dot search term what we will do is to return immediately and we'll say router dot push and we take this user to the home page now right here we will construct our url so we'll say const url will be equal to we will make use of the query string from query string dot stringify url invoke this we pass an object and we'll pass to object actually so comma and another object there so the last one we'll just say skip null and we'll set that to true but for this one we'll say the url is the default and then we will change our query okay so now we have uh, constructed our new url depending on the search term and right here all we will do is to push this user to that url so router.push url then we reset the input field so you can reset or you can write it stay so i save and actually this should work let's test it let's search for watch so right here i'll say watch click on search and nothing happens so what have we missed or maybe we might have messed up the spelling search term yes this one it's good now i think it will work so let me just remove the log there so watch search and there we go we only get the watch and our url now has this search term we search for phone It changes the search term to phone and we get the phone we will work on our very last section now uh, which is our summary we will need to go to admin 
then this page here is our admin page and this is the default this is the summary now this should be the summary let's create a new component here we will say summary dot tsx status functional component summary here for now let's have a div it will be a client component so here we will use client and then we will define an interface for our plops so we have those awesome so i save and then inside our page we will bring in our summary right here and we pass our various plops so this will be having products and we'll set these two products and it comprints there here we'll have react.fc and we pass our summary props now if we come back we'll have products from products here we'll have orders from our orders we will have users from our users right here we'll be having const products and these will be equal to await get uh, products we invoke these and uh, this expects to have a category and we'll pass null so we mark this function as an async function on this component let's get the orders we'll say const orders will be equal to so for users i don't think we have a function where we are getting all the users do we so let's create an action for getting our users and we'll simply say get users dot ts i save and that's our function for getting users very easy to use and here we just say uh, const users to be equal to await get users we have gotten all the data for now that we need and here we'll go ahead and uh, add this to be inside a container so container from components container and we wrap our summary in there I don't have prettier auto format so i'm kind of forced to format that manually and yeah we passed all that data to summary and let's work on summary now we'll be able to get those various props orders uh, products users i'll set some form of state i'll say const summary data and we will set summary data we'll set this to be equal to use state and here we will pass a type and we will be passing some default values here first of all let's define this type so right here we will say type summary data type for each of the data we will be having a key and the key will be a string and then right here full colon uh, we should set an equal sign here for type so key string then here a label which will be a string a digit which will be a number here we pass our summary data type like that let's define the data now we can have the cell we will say label is total cell and then here a comma we will say digit zero we will duplicate this several times so alt shift bottom arrow we'll have for products we'll have another one for uh, orders paid orders unpaid orders and users here we include total orders paid orders we can say paid orders unpaid orders users total users so this is the default data and it's in our state so we can use this set summary data to update the different stuff okay so to update this data 
we will make use of the use effect right here whenever our component uh, loads now at the dependency array we'll have orders products and users as the dependencies so when any of these change our use effect will run again and here we will simply call set summary data and then we invoke it here we will get the previous state of our summary data i'll just call it prev and we will use that to update everything in here so right here i'll say let uh, our temp data temporary data be equal to our previous state so i spread the previous state like that and then at the end here we are required to return something and we'll be returning our temp data we need to do more here we need to update our total sale we need to update paid orders and paid orders and all those okay let's calculate our total sale so we'll say const total sale will be equal to we'll get all our orders and we will use reduce so here we will have an accumulator and we will have an item here we are passing an arrow function and at the end here we will pass the default of zero then we will do the calculation in here we will check if the status of our item is complete so item dot status is equal to complete so that means that this item has been paid for so if they have paid for this item we'll go ahead and return accumulator plus item dot amount we'll say else we will just uh, return the accumulator and then here i'll say const paid orders will be equal to we'll take all our orders and we will filter them so dot filter here we'll have an order and here we will return order dot status so we'll only take the orders that are complete again we will get the unpaid orders we will check for pending these will be our unpaid orders now here we can simply update our temp data so we'll say temp data um, dot cell dot digit so we update the digit part of it we'll set this to our total cell and then we'll say temp data again dot orders then here dot digit we'll set this to orders uh, dot rent then temp data dot uh, paid orders uh, basically most of the rest will be almost same so alt shift bottom arrow that will be for paid orders unpaid orders products users so let's just update those one by one now let's start with this one so this will be paid uh, orders dot digit it will be uh, paid orders dot length then this one will be for unpaid orders so unpaid orders then this one will be unpaid orders dot rent this one will be for products and here we will have products and this one will be for users and here we will have users so basically we update this data with the yeah, correct digits or number and that's how we can update that now let's work on displaying them so right here this div will have a class name and we will say max hyphen width will be uh, 1150 px and then margin auto then right here we will have another div and we'll have a heading here let's have title and we'll say stats then let's center let's have a class name and we'll set margin to the bottom of four and margin to the top of eight let's come down here we'll have a div we can add a class name here 
So class name grid, let's have two columns. So grid calls to let's have a gap between them of three. Let's have a max height of 50 vh. Let's overflow uh, along the y to be auto. Now right here we will map through our data and as you can see our data is in form of an object so we can't map an object so we need to convert somehow these into an array so we can extract the keys sale products orders like that from that particular state so how can we do that we'll come right here and we'll say const summary keys will be equal to we will use object uh, dot keys we invoke that and we pass our summary data and this will get our summary keys right here as an array and then we can map through that so here we will map through our summary keys we will say if we have our summary keys then end end let's then go ahead and say summary keys dot map we invoke that here we'll get a key at a time and we can use that to do something we need to return and we will return a div like that this div need to have a key the key can be this one now is this one now this will be having a class name it will be rounded to be xl border will be two padding will be four flex flex to the call items will be center and uh, we'll have a gap of two then we will transition looks good now here we'll have another div and let's first work on the class name for this one we'll have text as xl md text will be for xl extra large for xl font will be bold we will now show our data we will perform a check to check if this is um, if it's a price or just a number and the only price we have is the sale so here we will say summary data and then we will use a key to get the data we will have dot label and if this is equal to our total sale so summary data dot key so we access like this summary data dot key so summary data if the key is cell then we will be able to receive this object and here we will check if the label is total cell and if it's total cell we will use a ternary operator and here we will show the data in a certain format else we will show the data in a different format and right here we want to show the price we call format price we invoke that just copy this part here and that is what i will include here then here i'll say dot digit and then right here this is just a normal number and uh, i can copy this all of it i will copy and i'll paste it here we don't want to use format price but we'll create a new helper function to format the number so at our utils we'll add a new file and we'll say format number dot ts so this will format our number and we can use that function right here so instead of format price we'll say format number and we import it from there now after this div down here we will add a label so we'll have a div again we will have our summary key we access the label this should be summary data and there we go so hopefully we have something beautiful now and let's check it out so i come here and this is what we have so at least you are getting the total products total paid orders users unpaid orders total orders total sale so uh, so far it's good but not the best we are missing something to do with colors and borders so we misspelled the border here so border let's see 
and there we go so we have that border for our section i think it's so wide right here so this should be having the square bracket there then remove that save much better now it will not be wider than that ever so if i happen to zoom out it looks good on all screens the next thing that we will be having at the bottom here is a graph showing sales for the last seven days so let's work on that next uh, so now finally i want us to work on our graph for the last seven days and i think the hardest part about that is uh, getting the graph data from the db so right here what i'll do i'll paste a function uh, that will uh, help us to get the data and then i'll try to explain the steps that are happening okay so let's see here we are defining a new function called get graph data and it's inside our actions so you can add it and you can copy things as they are right here yeah just make sure that you don't have some sparing mistakes or punctuations things like that so the first thing that we are doing here we are getting the start and the end dates for the data range so we want to get the data for the last seven days so right here we get the start date to be uh, the current date and we subtract uh, six days from that and we get it from the start of the day and this one the seventh day will be today and all we are doing here now is to query our database using prisma but we have to group the data in a certain way so we group uh, our data by created date so we will get the orders uh, for each of the day and we sum all the amount for that particular day so right here we group by create date and then right here we filter so we want the data for the last seven days to begin with to be greater or equal to the start day and to be less or equal to the end date so we get between that range and we make sure that the orders payment status is complete and then right here we sum the orders for each of the day so we get the total amount for uh, that particular day okay and we want the data to be in a certain format so right here we initialize an object that will hold this kind of data so each day for example monday we'll have the data in this format we will have the day which is now monday we'll have the date for that day and then we'll have the total amount for that particular day uh, which will be basically this total amount which we already calculated here uh, using our prisma but now we want to update each day we don't know the days we only know the date okay so here we use a while loop and we get the current date here we clone the current date and we use the while loop to be between the range the current date okay this is like this last seven days and i think it's it's wrong naming the end date is today so we get that range the range for the seven days and right here we get the day in this particular form basically we get the name of that day whether it's monday tuesday wednesday thursday uh, something like that so we get it and then we take our object here we take that date we add that date as a key and we add its data so the data now will have day the date will be this one and the total amount currently will be zero so we haven't updated the total amount yet and then right here we will move to the next day okay now the next step is to update this total amount so we uh, take the result the result is this one the one from the database we take that result loop through it and we will take the amount for each of the day first of all we determine which day it is uh, for that particular amount so here it's entry dot created date and then we get the amount for that day the total amount for that day and now we update our aggregated data we specify the day we take the total amount and we set it to our amount right here remember this is zero so we will just be adding the amount that we get from here it can either be the sum or else it will be zero so basically we update our amount that we get from our result here which is already summed 
for that particular day. And then after that, we will convert our aggregated data into an array and the array will be sorted by date. So we get a sorted array right here, which we return. So we will use that array to create our graph. And that is basically it. So you can copy this function as it is. So I'll go ahead and save that file. You need not go to up, then you'll go to admin and right here at the admin, we will add a new file. So this one, we will call it bar graph uh, dot tsx and this will be a client component. So use client. We will be making use of uh, a third party library called react chat js uh, to create our chat. So let me show you. You can just search for it. Uh, react chat js. This is it. You can open it like that. And you see, you'll need to install chat js and react chat js. So from npm here, I'll copy that and I'll just go ahead and install those two packages right here. Okay. So for now, let's copy this code right, like that, which is here. And we come right here and we will paste it. Here, we'll create a status functional component and we can call it bar graph. Uh, for now, let's just have a uh, React fragment. Let's import chat as uh, chat.js. Then here, we will get bar element, not arc, but bar element like that. We will also be getting category scale. We will be getting linear scale. We will also be getting tooltip and we will be getting legend like that from chat.js. And then right here, we will register all those. So we will register bar graph category linear scale, copy them and paste them right there. Okay. And then right here, we want to use this one. So remove that one. We will also not import donut from here, but we will import bar from React JS. Okay. So like that for this particular bar graph, we will be having an interface down here. We will say type graph data. This will be an object. It will be having a day. The day will be a string and then it will be having date. Will also be string it will be having the total amount and the total amount will be number okay and then let's pass that right here so here we will have react dot fc and we pass our bar graph props now right here we will destructure our data like that and right here let's log the data to the console and i save we come back here we'll go to the page and here we should add our graph. So let's have a div and in here we will show our bar graph component which we just created and it will be self closing. This bar graph component expects to have data and this data will be our uh, graph data. Okay, we don't have this graph data so we get it. So right here we'll say const graph data will be equal to we await and we'll say get uh, graph data we invoke that we pass it here and we will get it right here so let's first complete here here we will be having a class name margin to the top to be four then mx will be auto and then we let's have a max width for this one so that it's not too big so we'll have one one uh, five zero px and i happen to save that the data we receive it right here and we are logging it to the console so let's see if we get any data and i don't think we have any completed orders so we might get nothing so let's see um here we will inspect and console so actually you have the data and it's for the last seven days but we have zero sales for each of the day 
So as you can see, it has organized the data depending on the days. And if I check here, you'll see today is Thursday for me. And you'll see Thursday is the last day here. So it has calculated for the last seven days. And the total amount is zero. So what we can do is to manipulate the database and complete the orders manually. Uh, we will have some of them as complete. So that is what I'll currently do. I'll just go to MongoDB. So here I am in uh, MongoDB and we have the orders. Right here, I have several orders. Uh, some I'll complete, but I guess they are past the date. I don't know which are recent. I think this one is recent. So I'll just mark all of them as complete. So here we can edit this, click on this, edit status to complete. Make sure the spelling is correct. Um, I'll update that document. That is from the bottom there. And we also have this as complete. Okay, I think this is the most recent one right here. And let's see if it's included in our data. So if I happen to refresh, it should get the data from the DB and uh, calculate the data. So we have this. Look, yesterday, this is the order that I did and we have some data. Awesome. So we can create another order and then update it manually here so that we have two of them. So here, let's go to shop and we will add these two. So I'll purchase one watch and one phone. So that should be a thousand and uh, 90 so we add that cut we view the cut so 1090 we check out so once we click the checkout the order will be created in the db so we, d we actually don't have to <laughs> complete the payment for now uh, all i will do is that i'll go to the db here and i will refresh because I think we now have the order, we just complete it manually right here. So we have this 1090. We were adding this to zero because in Stripe, the amount is usually in cents, something like that. So basically, I just want to set this pending to be complete and we update. Now, this is for today. This is for yesterday. You need to scroll to the very bottom for the latest one. And if I come back here, go to console, let's clear. And we go to admin dashboard. We should be able to get now the data for event today. So seven and look for today, it updated to this one. This is yesterday. If this we had sales, they would also update. So our data is updating fine. We just need to make use of it right here. We will say const labels. We will get labels from our data dot map here we'll get an item at a time but what we will return is item dot day so we get the days in an array there then here we'll have const amount or amounts will be equal to data dot map and here we will get an item at a time and we will return item dot total amount okay then right here we will say const chart data is equal to we create an object it will have labels and labels will be labels it will have data sets the data sets will be an array of this kind so we pass an object uh, the label the label will be sale amount the data will be amounts. So this is amounts or amounts. Okay, amount. Does it have plural or is it just amount? I don't know. So here we will have background color. We will set it to this value RGBA. Invoke that 75. Okay, 192, 192 and here opacity of 0 
and then here we will have border color then right here we will have the border width is one okay so we get the data set and our chart data has rebel sent data set okay now right here after this one we will create another object called options so const options will be equal to an object and right here we'll say scales and we'll say y begin at zero will be true then here this is an object y is a key so we create that options for y y axis okay now right here we will simply return the bar component that we get from react chart js and here data prop will be our chart data then here we'll say options and options will be options there we go i save and we should be seeing our graph now we refresh and look amazing we have now this graph there sale amount our amount here when and uh, i think this amount is in cents so uh, you can format it to be in dollars i think it's in cents but you get the point on how to create a bar graph this should be at the center so at the page uh, margin x auto max hyphen width hyphen save should be at the center here uh, there we go so look very nice you can change the colors if you want you can change the colors using this right here background color buddha color uh, so now that we completed our application i want to take you through the last step of deploying this application so we will use vassel to deploy it so first things uh, first is that i want to take you through some issues that i fixed first uh, before i deploy the application else uh, you might face issues after deploying and the first one is from page dot tsx file so this is the home page okay so if you go to app then this one here um from here i included a key uh, when we are mapping through our data so add a key plop like this and then at the top of the file i added this line revalidate zero and sometimes you can also export const uh, dynamic and i think you force dynamic uh, it just have issues when generating some pages and uh, this is the solution that i found if there is a better one you can just uh, let everyone know at the comment section below and then the other one is at our route and that is create payment intent to be specific so i changed how i am returning the errors and i am using this right here next response uh, dot error and i'm doing this for all of our next response dot error so this is the first one here where we check if we have a current user then i think we have others we have this one if we don't have an order and uh, finally at the very bottom i added this right here um to return an error if the checks that you are doing here fails okay so we have this if statement if all these checks fail uh, we are returning the error so make sure to return an error at the very end as a default so this is the route.ts where we have the create payment intent uh, file and then uh, the next thing that i did is at package.json file i added this right here post install then prisma uh, generate so at scripts make sure to add this particular line at line 10 and then lastly um i had to upgrade 
my Next.js version to the latest version because uh, I was facing issues with the previous one when trying to deploy and uh, it was breaking at build time. So to upgrade to the latest version, you can go to uh, getting started with Next.js installation. Then you will come right here where we have install next at latest, react at latest, and react dom at latest. And then you just copy that command and you will paste it at your terminal. And you hit enter to upgrade. So if you check now, my version for next, I don't know if I can see it, is 13.5. So probably when you are doing yours, it will be even higher. But I found that that fixes some uh, compatibility issues and so on or gives you better error messages during build time so you can try that or you can upgrade your next 13 together with react and react dom okay okay so those are the changes that i did so now let's deploy and to deploy we need to uh, take our application at github and um, uh, funny enough i already have this application on github so what i'll do is that I will cut the connection between this app and my GitHub by removing this .git file. Uh, I think there is some way in which you can hide or show it. Uh, right now, I'm not sure why it is. Hide items. Okay, yeah, there it is. So, if you want to, sh to see that .git, .git file or folder, we have these hidden items. If you show it, it appears. If you hide, it doesn't. So I'll go ahead and delete that one. And that uh, will just remove the connection between my GitHub and this file so that we begin from scratch. So what I'll do now is to go to my GitHub account and I'll create a new repository. I'll go to my repositories and uh, I'll create a new one. So here I'll say eShop. I can say prod. I'll make it private because it's just for showing you how to deploy and I'll create the repo. Here we have instructions on how we can go about it. Creating a new repository, pushing an existing repository. So we want to create a new repository and push it. So here I'll pop the terminal I guess. Let me put them side by side. We just need to say git in it to initialize an empty repository and that will give us this dot git folder right here um, we need to add all the files you can see we have all these changes so we need to add them so i'll say uh, git add and i'll use asta and that will add all the changes then we will commit them so i'll say git uh, commit uh, minus m and I'll enter the message right here. Um, I can say next 13 up and I hit enter. You can enter anything there. And then we create the main branch. So git branch minus M and I'll say main. I'm just following what we have here. Then we connect this with our remote repository. Just copy this one right here. I'll copy and we link them by calling that command and then we push to uh, our origin main so git push minus u origin main and that will link this remote repo uh, with our local one and the code here will be pushed to our remote one now it completed so if we refresh we should be seeing our code here and there we go so once the code is in our github repository all we need to do is to go to Vassel. So create a Vassel account if you don't have one. And uh, I think you can continue with GitHub if I'm not wrong. Then I'll make sure that I click on the name. So here, okay, we need to create a project actually. So I'll click on project and we will import from a Git repository. This is the one that we want. So I'll click on import. We can leave that as the name so we will come here at environment variables so what you need to do is to just go to your env file 
and here you will copy everything copy and you click on here and control v once you do that you'll see all the environment variable are added at the bottom here which is really cool and right here you'll click deploy it's building you can click on this to see the build process and fingers crossed uh, it works uh, it might fail but uh, hopefully it works because i had already done it and fixed the issues the one that i showed you so uh, let's be hopeful so it's building for the four seconds we have warnings uh, warnings are not that bad but you can try to fix them most of them are about dependencies um, dynamic server usage page could it be rendered statically because it used headers so we have these red issues there are a lot of them um, i don't know if they are major errors but uh, generally our uh, next js still works so there we go it completed building uh, you just deployed a new project and it's live so it worked now although there are all those red errors uh, they are just telling us that some pages were not generated statically uh, we can click on the project i guess and it should open our app and there we go so it's deployed now you, you can see it right here we try the different categories they seem uh, like they are working there we go awesome we can try to register here charles and the email uh, i'll use this as the password and i will sign up it's loading something went wrong oops so what went wrong it failed to register let's refresh and try again uh, charles maybe i already had the account or something i'm not sure let me say zero one and here i'll say at gmail.com and let this be the password sign up account created awesome logged in so it's working and we are now logged in we can be we can add items to cart and see if they are being added so here we can change color change quantity add to cart view cart and there we go so our app is deployed now only a few things that you will need to fix so i'll log out here uh, one we need to allow this continue with google so for that you need to go to google console so go to google console and i'll click on google cloud console and right here i'll copy this uh, domain name that we are given there for free so here we had some uh, api keys and secret keys for google so i'm looking for the one that has these qqzq uh, client secret uh, it might be this eShop tute so i'll go to api and services and from here i'll go to credentials and i'll click on web client you can confirm the key right here if this key is the same as the one that you have at your environment variable then you know that you are on the right application and then you'll need to add a url here okay so i'll add this url which is the one that we were given eShop prod vassel.app so you'll use yours and then you make sure to add this extension stroke api stroke org stroke callback stroke google so you'll copy that and you'll paste there and you'll save so that you allow uh, google sign up and google uh, sign in so once that is saved you can test it so i can refresh here uh, i don't think i need to but i'll still do that and then continue with google 
and you'll see here it will give you different accounts that you can continue with and you'll be able to log in with google right here so if i go to admin dashboard we can see if that works and it works even all this you can see uh, if we have add products and uh, manage orders here we can click on checkout to see if it loads checkout and it does so this is really cool another thing that you can do is to go to stripe and uh, connect a webhook to you uh, this particular application the last thing uh, you can go to stripe let's try do, doing that so once you are logged in you can go to developers then you'll go to webhooks then right here you'll add an endpoint so endpoint url so it will be this but we should add our webhook endpoint uh, which was at pages then stripe webhook so here it should be stroke i think api then stroke stripe uh, hyphen webhook and then listen to event on your account version we select events so which event uh, are we listening to so if we come to stripe webhooks you can check we won't charge succeeded that is the only event that you are listening to so we have charge here uh, click on this drop down then we want to recent charge succeeded then we will add that event and we will add the endpoint so here it's enabled charge succeeded whenever we make a payment it should uh, come here but you need to do one more thing you need to add this signing secret to to be your key so i'll copy this one and then you'll go to vassal to this application so i'll click continue here i guess and uh, how can we update our environment variables okay i'll click on home here then you have this project i'll click right here i think i can go to settings we have this and uh, okay we have here environment variables stripe webhook secret so we want to update this one edit so change this key to the one that we copied from stripe and you go ahead and save okay it came at the top here updated just now so yeah um i'll click on any data dummy data enter a card number you can use this one 42424242 any future date any cvc and i'll pay it's processing uh, check out success let's view our order and uh, payment is pending okay let's refresh now give it some seconds and refresh and still it's pending so our webhook uh it's not working <laughs> okay so let's check stripe let's refresh so here we have charge succeeded but it failed to deliver the event so it will try to deliver again in like an hour so after uh, several trials I was able to resolve our stripe webhook error and what you need to do is to redeploy your project once you update your environment variables so to redeploy you can actually click on the project um, and then you can click here on deployments and right here you can come to the profile and you click on redeploy okay so once you redeploy you can test out if it's working by coming right here and resending the request so you can click on any and resend and you'll see if now here it will be checked as you can see i made a lot of trials right here for my case it actually uh, stopped showing this error 400 and it started showing this error right here 
four five method not allowed so i realized that this error comes from uh, our api so if you click on logs you'll be able to see your production logs and you can see we have this seller here 405 and it was saying that prisma is not defined okay so i fixed that by importing prisma i don't know uh, how this happened because aria it was working on locally so make sure you have prisma imported or solve any other errors that you might have right here once you do that you uh, push to your github a repository and then it will automatically redeploy your application and you will wait okay so you will go to projects i guess to Chow charles so once you click on the project you will confirm if it has completed re redeploying again you will need to give it some time like two or three minutes and then now you will come back and retest your uh test here so you will click on any of the charge here and you resend so if i resend that it has resend and if i refresh it should be marked as succeeded if it's not then uh, there is still an issue uh, which needs to be fixed and as you can see now that is succeeded now if i come back to my eShop here i had created these two orders right here and if I refresh, you'll see now that the payment status should be paid. So we have this one is paid. Okay, it worked for this one, but not for this one. Anyway, let's try to purchase something now and uh, see if it will work. So I can buy three of these. So here we add a line, a number. Then I pay. Checkout succeeded. Let's check if it's fired here. Yeah, it succeeded. Okay. Let's check our orders and look, it succeeded payment status. So a few seconds ago, so it's working now. And now we are finally done with our course. Uh, I know it was a huge one, but we have created a complete e-commerce using uh, Next 13, uh, making use of the app router, uh, Tero and CSS, TypeScript, and so much more. We created even the admin dashboard and processed payment using Stripe. Also worked on our auth, even Google auth. So I hope it was worth it. So if you really liked my content, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. Also, um, subscribe and share with your friends. And if you need to support my content further, you can find me on Patreon at Chow Charles. And I'll leave a link at the description section below. So... Uh, I'll be seeing you on the next course.